Hey, everybody, what's happening? Today is Tuesday. It is July 19th, and uh, we got a really great show coming your way this afternoon as we get ready for the All-Star Game this evening. Uh, before we do, I'm going to try, I always do, try and be as brief as possible, and then I just start rambling and rambling, but I'll keep going here. Uh, I'll start with Seven Mile Casino. Everybody knows our messaging by now, right? I, all I ask is that you support our sponsors because with these sponsors, they support the show. And um, without them, you know, we don't do this every day. We don't all get to hang out. I mean, yesterday we had a monster day happening on our YouTube channel and everything that was going on in our YouTube chat. So it's these sponsors that really help support the show. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. You know the deal. Blackjack, poker, table games over here in a smoke-free environment. Sammy's Restaurant and Bar over here. All seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. And if you have any problems with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. We appreciate you guys. Same thing goes for our friends at Tory Holistics and California Holistics. Now, Tory Holistics, the original store, everybody here probably knows, is in Sorrento Valley, uh, about to get a massive facelift. Why? Because California Holistics down in Chula Vista is so brand new and so beautiful and so standalone and everything else that Tory Holistics wants to, you know, maybe freshen up things a little bit. I personally don't think they need to do it because the shop is great. If you're going in for any of your favorite cannabis brands or products, whether it's for sleep, recreation, uh, pain management, what have you, use our promo code SD Pride. That's S D Pride. You'll save 20% at Tory Holistics and California Holistics. Uh, big thanks goes out to our friends at Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, Gary Cooper, 858 376 1299. 858 376 1299. I will just tell you this I notice in my neighborhood, um, there are three houses one, two, three for rent, for sale, for sale, and a block down the road for rent and a block around the corner for rent. And what's really weird about it is I haven't seen signs in ages, number one. And number two, uh, these signs have been sitting there for a while. The market is changing as the economy and the world is rotating. You need information, call Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. Anything having to do with real estate, 858-376-1299. Buying, selling, refinancing, positioning yourself to buy. Gary Cooper is the go-to guy, 858-376-1299. 1299. I've used him. We all saw what he did with Alex and Mar last year, getting them into their first home. Um, another shout out. This time it goes to my man, Brian Bushfield, West Coast BBQ shop, westcoastbbqshop.com. I saw Tommy Tommy, all time great friend, having Brian Bushfield delivering his brand new big green egg to his house. And so Brian literally, he brought it, set it up, built it, constructed it, put it on wheels taught him how to use it. I mean, it it really is an amazing service. Yes, he sells great products, but he provides a great service. So if you're trying to build an outdoor kitchen, if you want an Italian pizza oven, if you're thinking big grain egg, if you're thinking about a grill, or if you just want to come into the shop and buy tomahawk steaks, prime uh, uh, New York prime steaks, if you want to buy uh, fillets, sauces, seasonings, anything having to do with grilling, West Coast BBQ Shop in Chula Vista, West Coast BBQ Shop. Dot com. Go up north, Mazda Vescondido, mazdavescondido.com. Really important message here from Alan, the general manager of Mazda Vescondido. He needs your used cars. Used cars are worth more now than ever before. There are still supply chain issues, and I've been reading a lot about them, and they're going to continue likely for the next 18 months or so. Mazda Vescondido wants your used cars. If you want to trade one in, you're going to get higher value than ever before to get a new Mazda product. If you don't, Alan's ready to make you an offer on the spot. Bring in your car, let him look at it. He'll make you an offer. If you like it, you take the money and you run. Mazda Vescondido, mazdavescondido.com. Quick mention of our friends at iThrive, iThrive MD. This upcoming Saturday is our next IV Lounge. I said it earlier, this is going to be a really big week because I got Bill Hagen's event at the Crankin' on Wednesday night. Great friend Stables kickoff of Del Mar on Thursday night and opening day for Del Mar on Friday night with the after party at the Rancho Valencia. Saturday, I'll see you at iThrive MD. Make your appointment now, 858-240-1497. Get those vitamins delivered right into your body and get them absorbed immediately. Get really hydrated and you are going to feel great. iThrive MD, make your appointment. I'll see you there Saturday. 30% discount, 858-240-1497. Let's start the show. Yo, great friends, what's going on? It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. Hey, um, I don't know about everybody else, okay? 
Uh, last night was the home run derby for the all-star festivities. And tonight is the all-star game and lots of Padres, lots of Dodgers sprinkle in a little bit of angels um, and all your favorite players. I don't know if everybody's going to be watching the all-star game tonight, like sitting down, watching it, like fully, you know, engaged in it. And I don't have any concept of how many people were really doing that last night for the home run derby. I know I was kind of most interested in the first round because I wanted to see that one eight matchup where Browner told us that Albert Pujols was going to win. And oh, by the way, at least in the early round, Pujols did win. I was much more interested yesterday in all of the chatter around baseball about Juan Soto, who went on to win the home run derby, about where he's going to be traded. Yesterday, the conversation was Padres seem to be one of the leaders when it comes to trying to acquire Soto. But, of course, everybody in baseball, especially all the big money spenders, they're the ones that are all involved in all this. And I can just tell you this, as much as Padre fans think that he's coming to San Diego, Dodger fans expect that he's coming to L.A. Um, and one of my ESPN L.A. colleagues yesterday said on the air, and I agree with it, I actually think it would be bad for baseball if Juan Soto went to the Dodgers or the Yankees. I mean, just the richest of the rich keep getting richer. You know, uh, the Padres, it's like, well, they're trying to catch up to Big Brother. They have not yet. Um, yesterday we were talking about if on paper the Padres had Juan Soto, does that put them in the class of the Dodgers? We put video out yesterday on social media and Dodger fans came running after us going, uh, you guys are out of your mind. So we're just getting going. All-star game is kind of top of mind. Let me say good afternoon to my guys. Here's Grande. Here's the brown man. Uh, Grande, were you sitting around all night last night intently watching the home run derby? Uh, I watched every pitch of the home run Did derby, really? actually. It was a yeah, first year I've done that since I was a child, probably. I, I didn't have anything to do. Uh, so I, I sat there and I was on my phone and watching intently. And uh, it wasn't bad. It's long. It's long. Lots of commercials, but it wasn't bad. It was good. Julio Rodriguez is uh, was very fun to watch. That kid, you know, we, saw, we just saw him here at Petco destroy the Padres. So we got a little taste of him early. Um, but yeah, it was a good time. I, 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 I liked it. Yeah, I um I will say Carl Ravitch is the um is the commentator now, right? He's like the lead announcer on it, you know. Gotta be honest. Yeah. I watch it on ESPN Deportes. Oh, really? Watch it in yep. Spanish? So much more exciting, dude. Really? Like I like Carl Ravitch. I really do. He's been the voice of baseball on ESPN for my whole life. But boring for the home run derby. Not the vibe at all. He asked who Bad Bunny was. <laughs> come on man what'd you expect from him he's a 60 year old white guy would you think he he's gonna be there's down the, with bd and he's there's the, the problem B. there's the he's problem the, with exactly. baseball right there like, exactly he's a 60 year old white man in an event that's li literally supposed to be fireworks fun yeah. energetic yeah. that's it this is supposed to be care. about laughter and jokes yeah. and guys hanging out with their kids make like yeah, i don't care about the white man there. part i don't care about the white man part i care about the 60 year old part I care about the no energy. I care about the calling it like it's a baseball yeah. game. Mm -hmm. Like he was calling it like it was a baseball game. Yeah. It's not a baseball game. Put it's yeah. a home Burr, run derby. Put, put Bill Burr in there. Put Kevin Hart in there. Put somebody who will make, Dude, make light of stuff. Kevin Hart, what they did in the Olympics, do that. Yeah. What they like, do in the Olympics. Thought, him they and did, Snoop. Like, yeah, they were in a studio. Them two together were in a studio, and they just showed him clips of the funniest things or the coolest things. Or the most random things that happened during the Olympics, and they just commentated on it. It was hilarious. Like, no script, just them two. And, I don't even uh, like listen, Kevin Hart. I, I don't think <laughs> I don't think ESPN cares too much. I mean, but they really got to do something with the broadcast because I, I you think Carl Ravage is going to be like pissed off if he gets taken off the Home Run Derby broadcast? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he will because, um, and I, I, I really don't know the answer. But I, I will say this that. For years, everybody kind of ridiculed and criticized. I think probably because people got bored of Chris Berman. Back, 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 back. He just hit that one to the Santa Monica Pier. Back, yeah. back, 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 back. That Man, one that went so far, too. it's down to Orange County. Back, 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 back. That was he hit old, that right? one so far, he went to San Diego. Back, 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 back. Mm -hmm. Did you see I much Chris prefer that. Did, did you see Chris Berman yeah. yesterday? Did you guys happen yes. to see him yesterday? Yes. So I only was, I was watching, I didn't see Berman. Was he part of the broadcast at all? Because I was watching no. the preliminary warmups to the broadcast, you know, and they showed Chris Berman and I don't, dude, all I know is this. I mean, I know it was very hot out there yesterday. Okay. Everybody's I'm not saying, sweating. yeah, like everybody's sweating, but dude, Berman 
Oh, no, my, oh my God, this is so funny. You just brought this up. I had no idea that you had this. Berman is sitting there next to Jeff Passan and uh, Tim Kirkshin. Yeah. And, and Carl Ravage, I think, is to his right, although we don't see Carl in this picture that we're looking at. And yeah. Berman, poor guy. I mean, I love Chris Berman. I really honestly love Chris Berman. I always thought of him and associated him more with football than I did with baseball. But because of his exciting nature, you know, back, 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 back. He, he, that was funny. He shows up yesterday. We haven't seen Chris Berman. Actually, who is that to his right? I, I can't tell who that is. I don't is. know. Yeah, that was not Ravage. But we haven't seen Berman. At least I haven't. As is a that viewer Jeff of Passan? Passan? No, Passan is to right. his left. We're looking at it. Passan is to the right. Kirkshin is to the right. I'm trying to figure out who is to Berman's left as we look at it. Berman's oh, right as he was standing there. I don't know who that is either. Yeah. But we haven't seen Berman, at least I haven't, as a, as a regular ESPN viewer. I haven't seen Chris Berman on TV in a really, really long time. And I know he's a big guy. And I know he's, you know, he's a little older now. Um, doesn't look all that different, frankly. But man, oh man, poor guy yesterday was just sweating Soaked. like a mofo. And the thing is, is that when you're on TV and you're outdoors, it's very hard to hide. And when you're wearing a light blue shirt, and you start to sweat, and all of a sudden the light blue shirt turns dark blue. Uh, I kind of, I kind of felt bad for what I call the Godfather of ESPN, Chris Berman. I kind of felt bad for him yesterday. Like, dude, it, Ravage, Ravage had some uh, under boob sweat happening too. Yeah, I mean they had no shade. Ninety <laughs> degrees in LA yesterday. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, like, <laughs> like it, it's gotten warm here uh, where I broadcast from in my house, and um, and I literally have a fan underneath nope, my nope, table don't, no boy. no it's true dude i have a fan underneath my table pointing up it's hitting my legs and my crotch right now it, it's coming right into my shorts the, i got the, a long the, fan to my right that hits my ankles to my head like a it's all it's on every day yeah brown you use a fan in your uh in your crib in your studio dog i survived doing this show from a shed sweating sweating profusely no i don't need a fan now i got space yeah. there's a breeze in here all right. Is it okay? Can I ask you guys a question too? Is it that much of a fashion faux pas to wear an undershirt with a dress shirt on top? Because I, mean, I that's I my go to. That is my go to move. Like yeah. all these guys that are on television, they know they're going to be on television, mm -hmm. and they don't wear an undershirt, so they got pit stains, they got boob sweat, they got neck sweat. A simple thin white tee catches yeah. all of that. I've I don't not, understand. I've I've never like, not it's done like it. go to move when I go to a wedding mm -hmm. and I see dudes that are wearing a white shirt and they're sweating their balls off on the dance floor. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're wearing a see through shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm like, is it that uncommon to put an undershirt on? I never wear an undershirt ever. What? Ever. I didn't know people didn't. I always I, do. I, I thought it was. Huh? Like a, a, a white guy thing, dude. I really just thought it was a white guy thing that you guys just I never don't even do it. Knew this. No, I don't do it. I don't wear. I don't wear an undershirt. What? But but here's what I would say: if I were gonna wear an undershirt, if, and it's not like I'm opposed to it. But here's what I would rather: if I were gonna wear an undershirt, oh. here's the thing: I want a white t-shirt, and I'm gonna yeah. get it in. In for me, I want a medium. Oh, I, I don't. What did you say? V-neck. Yeah. Well, I do. I would prefer a V-neck, hey, and v I would want it in in a medium. And the reason is, is because I would want the undershirt to be super tightly, snugly fitting. Because the thing is, is that I hate anything to, to get an edge, huh? Well, I don't, I don't, I, I hate tucking in shirts in the beginning. The, the first, first things first, I hate to tuck in a shirt. Okay. But sometimes, Same. unfortunately, the occasion Business. calls for, yeah, I got to tuck in. I got to wear a belt. I got to look cleaned up, et cetera, et cetera. The reason I don't like to tuck in shirts is, is because mostly it makes me feel fat. You know, I feel very self-conscious. Like I'll, I'll look at, at myself and my profile in the mirror. I'm like, is my belly sticking out over my belt? And, and so first things first, tucking in a shirt makes me feel fatter than I really am. Makes me feel really self-conscious. Okay. And I've been to a lot of places, like a lot of weddings where, or bar mitzvahs or bat mitzvahs where I'm always the guy when they bring the chair in the middle and everybody gets lifted up on the chair. I'm the ringleader of that mm -hmm. because when you're the, in the middle of that, you're in every picture forever. So I like to be that guy. Okay. And when I'm done, I'm sweating like a mofo. I mean, I am just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like I just ran a marathon sweating, 
the undershirt is not going to help that, frankly. Now, where the undershirt it will though. Tell me more. Right. It will it will catch the stains. Mm-hmm. Oh, the pit stains. The, the pit stains, mm-hmm. the, the underboob, the, chest, the underboob, the chest, mm-hmm. the back. Anywhere you sweat, you literally got to be like showered in sweat for it to come through an undershirt. Mm. And even if it does come through an undershirt, it'll be like a dot or two. It won't be a full on, you know, puddle of sweat under your oil pit. spill. Yeah. I'm a big I'm gonna, firm believer. Always have been when I got to wear a dress shirt, even a black one. Like I will throw on an undershirt because I don't, I don't want to be the dude with under boob and pit stains on. Mm-hmm. Like it just, I don't. I think it's a bad look more than an undershirt is a bad look. So then, I've show us a not. picture. Show us the picture again, if you don't mind, while Browner's talking. Show us the picture of Chris Berman, and and tell me how an undershirt would have helped. Not saying that it wouldn't have. So just so you know, because I'm going to do this next time I go to Costco. I know I got to go to Costco here soon. Costco has those like um, three pack T-shirts. They're usually, mm-hmm. I think, Calvin Klein branded. You know. And I'll, I wear them just as regular t-shirts, black V-necks, white V-necks. If I were Chris Berman and I were in this picture right here, if I were wearing a white V-neck t-shirt, cause he's got his, his, he's buttoned all the way up to the top. Yeah. The only one that's not buttoned is the very, very top one, which you would only need buttoned if you were wearing a tie. If Berman were wearing a white V-neck undershirt with that blue shirt, you're saying we wouldn't see all of his sweat. He, he not as hide much it from us. Yeah. I mean, this man, bad. but this man was full shower sweat you know like that's so that's going to be a tough thing to hide regardless but if you're not going to see it like that it's not going to look like a tie-dye shirt that's for sure i mean the guy spent 20 years in the studio more that amount out in the sun for 20 minutes and then he sweats i know but but you look at look at guys like kirkshin and passing they you know they're little guys they look they very look, little they little. they well i mean berman's a big dude i mean berman is like 6'4 260 and kirkshin's 3'6 you know? 90 <laughs> yeah. Right. And Passon <laughs> is like five, nine, like 150 pounds. Yeah. You know, he's a small guy. Uh, but Berman's a big, heavy, older dude, like big, heavy breather, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, man, I kind of also felt for Chris it's time for him to let that hair yeah. go at the top, too. I felt for Chris Berman, too, to be honest. Because first of all, he should, if he's there and, and he's, he's on ESPN, it. he should be right. calling it. Call the freaking thing. I don't know what ESPN's doing, I don't get it. We had, like you, you had these young Latin players for the majority. Obviously, you had Alonzo and and others that were not. But it's like a it the home run derby always seems to be dominated, at least as far as the participants, by young Latin players because mm-hmm. that's who play the game, right? So I know Alonzo's won the previous two up until yesterday, but you gotta like match the vibe on the broadcast because it just doesn't, you know, it well, just doesn't. Like, you could hear the announcer in the stadium's different. Yeah, you could hear the music, the DJ. It's different, but the broadcast is the same. It's Eduardo Perez and and Carl Ravitch. Yeah, and, and Eduardo <laughs> Perez, as Hispanic as he may be, he's not exciting. And you know, to your at point, at least he knew who Bad Bunny was. Well, that's nice. You I mean, just, I would know who Bad Bunny is. You need somebody with fire and flair and energy and style doing the home run derby, man. This is the one time you can peacock that thing from the booth to the plate, and they just mm. don't. They just yeah. don't. I don't understand it. Yeah. No, actually, I think it's fair criticism. Yeah. I, I do. I ESPN think it's good criticism. Deportes was, it, ESPN Deportes just brought more energy. They right. had a very. They had. They had professional broadcasters. Mm-hmm. They had dudes that calls their Sunday night baseball on ESPN Deportes. They just happened to be matching the energy. Mm-hmm. So yeah. That's no, I think it's I a good idea. I, I really do. I think it's a very good idea, and I will uh, run that through the ESPN channels that I have no access to. <laughs> yeah. yeah i you wasn't know, telling you, you to email somebody it was, it was an observation it's so, funny. It's, it's so funny you guys say this though because i i um i got a message yesterday from one of my colleagues up in la and she said hey did you guys um get your email because espn you know it, it's a very big company and obviously i don't have a lot of access to it even though i'm an employee of it i've never been to bristol connecticut i've never been on the campus I, and frankly i don't really know any of the executive team at all um, like my colleague Sedano up in LA, he lived in Bristol. He worked at the ESPN campus. He knows everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know anybody. So um, I yesterday I received a, a message from one of our people and she said, hey, did you guys check your ESPN email? And did you see what ESPN is saying to all of its employees? And I wrote back and I go, I don't even have an ESPN email. I literally do not have an ESPN email. In fact, 
they have a portal. You know how like big companies have a portal and you can log in and you can, you know, you can check your vacation days. You can yes. check your pay stubs. You can find out about company wide events. I barely can log into the portal. So yesterday ESPN sent an email to all of its employees saying, Hey, we, you know, working at ESPN is a big deal. You know, you probably grew up wanting to work at ESPN. Now you do. We want you to be proud of where you work. And they have a backpack, like a beautiful black backpack that says ESPN all over it. And they said, you know, all you have to do is click here, put in your name and address, and we'll send you one. But I don't have an ESPN email. So I, I, have I no guarantee. I bet you do. Knowing you, I yeah. guarantee you do. I bet you do. Yeah. You just oh, never no. set it up. A hundred percent. Absolutely guaranteed. I'm sure that somewhere in the system, I have an ESPN email. It's just that no one ever told me what to do or how to set it up. And I have no idea how to get a hold of anybody in HR for any help. But somebody forwarded me the email yesterday and I filled it all out. Hey, it's me. Here's my address. Send me the backpack. I don't even know why I want it. I just feel like, you know, it's free. Right. That, pretty much. That's why. That's kind of yeah. actually why. Because it's, it's free and, and it's available. And that's why yeah. I wanted it. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Kaplan Child. Who is looking in here? Hi, Jillian. Oh, oh. I just love how working from home means kids come in while I'm on the air, dog walks in, does whatever he wants to do. Do you think that there would be less interruptions if there was a door as opposed to a curtain? A curtain doesn't really do any, you know, doesn't hold well, me back. Right. Well, here's the thing is when I moved, um, I used to have a door, but now <laughs> I didn't have any doors. And so the, when I first got here, I was trying to angle it so you couldn't see what was behind me. And then my thought process was, I'm not going to put doors on, on here. I'll just put up these curtains. And uh, yeah, it allows everybody to just kind of walk in and do whatever they want while we're on the air. Curtains a lot quieter than doors. Also, at least when they come in, it'll be quiet. That's kind of true. That is kind of true. Because hey, they're going to come in if there's a door or not. Right. So this whole conversation started with the Home Run Derby. It turned into getting sweaty which turned into, do you wear an undershirt or do you not wear an undershirt? If you don't wear an undershirt, I don't understand you. Yeah, for dress shirts, yeah. I don't understand you. Yeah. You know what I don't understand? And I see guys doing this still to this day. Guys who wear wife beater tank tops underneath dress shirts. What does that do for you? Those guys don't wear condoms. Don't trust them. <laughs> don't trust them at all. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait, wait, guys. Where does that go? Yeah, guys who what wear white beater tank us? tops. You you say across the board generality, those guys don't use one, condoms. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. That's the dumbest look you could ever possibly do. Where's the protection, bro? What what are we doing? So you you all this cut out all the danger zone of sweating, right? <laughs> the danger zone is in here and under here. It's wait. cut out. How is that helping you? You're saying maybe the it's neck more area of like a, and the pit. Yeah. 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 So maybe they don't do you? it for sweat protection. Maybe they do it for like what Scott was saying. They want it tight as possible. Maybe it's more of a sports bra. Is that Ooh, is that what maybe. a is that what a white tank top is like Ooh. underneath a dress shirt is more of a compression y sports bra cover, hold it all together down, kind of thing? Push down the under boob. Mm -mm. I see these this ad on Instagram for um guys wearing like a pair of underwear that you pull up really to your chest, you know? Oh, I saw that. And, and, <laughs> and, and, male and Spanx? Like, yeah, and it's male Spanx, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, and here's me. Hey, I could use that product. Oh, man. This is sit up but if I color. use Come that on, product, man. I'm just going to keep getting fatter and fatter <laughs> Yo, because man. I'm going to keep cheating with the male Spanx. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, I, I, have you guys ever up. got... I doubt Browner's ever got this ad, but have you ever got the ad of... Uh, the tease specifically for guys with man boobs. Oh yeah. Like supposedly like it, it eliminates the man boob. If right. you wear this tee and I was like, yeah. how does that work? dude?" Right. They're like, check like out this t-shirt, bro. Right. You're like, check out this t-shirt. <laughs> See the way it's cut. It's like your yeah. man boobs are showing off. But if you wear this t-shirt, it makes you look yeah. built and it's like, yeah. okay, so I don't have to work out. Buff. I, I just yeah. got to get the right t-shirt. Yeah. You, you got to wear right a, a t-shirt will cover your man boobs. Guys, guys, we're still men. Come on, yeah. fellas. I know, Come right? on. I know. What All right, listen. Let, let me do this. We started with the All-Star game. Stop we'll wearing wife beaters under our, jer or in our shirts, please. We'll, we'll, we'll jump into the All-Star game. Because we'll, we'll, I think the bigger story than the home run derby, which we'll get to, is really that everybody thinks they're getting Juan Soto. That in the next two weeks before the baseball trade deadline, everybody thinks they're getting him. The Yankees, the Mets, the Padres, the Dodgers. Everybody thinks they're getting Juan Soto. Hey, before we hit this break, I do want to remind everybody 
This upcoming Saturday, we have an IV lounge at iThriveMD. Here's the phone number if you want to make an appointment, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. I got a call yesterday from uh, Ron, who's the owner of the Crankin. He goes, dude, I'm hearing you guys talking about us on the radio. Wednesday night is the Crankin with Bill Hagen. Thursday night is the Great Friend Stables kickoff party for Del Mar. Friday is the Del Mar opening day. And Friday night is the Rancho Valencia after party. I will meet you at iThrive on Saturday between 12 and noon. You get a 30% discount. And by that time, I will need the iThrive and the IV. We're having an IV lounge on Saturday. Join us. 858-240-1497. We'll see you there. Let's get to the All-Star Game next on Kaplan and Crew. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. And yes, yeah, Seven Mile Casino is only seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. Sammy's Restaurant and Bar over here. Uh, the Slider Burgers are out of control. The Kung Pao Chicken is the best in San Diego, and it's not even a Chinese restaurant. The pizzas are great. Alex, I know you love the salads and those duck tacos. Mm -hmm. Browner, I know you love the wings. It's a great restaurant. And right next door, I mean, in the same building is Seven Mile Casino. And you got blackjack and poker and table games and people are winning and they're having a great time. I just want to encourage everybody, though, if you have any issues of any kind, you can call 1-800-GAMBLER. But I'll see you down there at Seven Mile Casino. And I wish everybody good luck. Now, at the commercial break, Alex said to us, and I have no idea what he's about to tell us that he's got a, a pay that man update. So on one hand, he might be talking about t-shirt sales on kaplanandcrew.com. And on the other hand, because we heard about this yesterday, that the Padres and Joe Musgrove, there seems to be some movement in this uh, contract negotiation that either might get done or might have to just wait, might have to be shelved for the second half of the season. So Grande, what is the pay that man update you were going to tell us about it looks like we have a number in mind now looks like we have an oh, annual boy. number in mind now when we're now, where's this where's this coming from i'm just curious so that it, so it, can, it's gonna be so in my range guess. it's gonna be yeah, in my so range I, I think it's gonna be in all of our range brown but i'm just curious where this information is coming from so that we we can take an edge this is today's guess. article from kevin ac titled padres joe musgrove feeling like the all-star he is mm-hmm that's a long title. Okay. Um, he goes into like kind of the story of, of how he has gotten to the Padres and how good he's been since he was with the Padres. And if you guys saw on your content today, actually, this is where I got it from. This is how good he's been since getting to the Padres. And if you go to 2020, he's been so three straight years of being a top 10 pitcher in all of baseball. Mm -hmm. So, in this, can you kind of just that up. Can you put that up while you're talking for those that are, are watching on YouTube or watching on TV? Uh, we can actually just take a quick look at this while you're uh, while you're commenting on it. All star Joe since joining the Padres, his record is 19 and 11. His ERA is 2.90 and seventh in what? And in the in the past two seasons, that's the seventh best ERA in all of baseball. OK, 305 strikeouts, 12th best in all of baseball and a whip whip of 2.90 whip okay. it good. Correct. So this was kind of just a quick little line in this long article, but I'll just read it to you and I'll stop when I get to the number and then you guys could guess. Okay. After being a part of the 17 Astros World Series team, he was traded to Pittsburgh. He further there, he further refined his six pitch arsenal. He grew into a solidly dependable starter and the Padres acquired him in January of 21 to be their third starter. They had, heard, mm -hmm. they had heard good things about his makeup, but they didn't know how much he had invested in physical and mental training and how that would pay off. It has reached a point where the team and Musgrove are close enough to agreeing on a multi-year contract that multiple sources said the deal, which would guarantee Musgrove upwards of blank a year. Okay. All right, Brown, you want to take the first shot here at the number? Six, 16. 16. Um, if this were a game... I would say 16 and one, meaning like I would go over <laughs> my number is going to be, my number is going to be 18. Yeah. My number has been 18. My number has been match Barrios's contract the whole time, mm -hmm. which is about mm -hmm. 18.3. Okay. So according to AC, it's reached a point where Musgrove is close enough to agreeing on a multi-year contract that multiple sources did the deal, which would guarantee Musgrove upwards of $18 million a year. Yeah. It I hadn't could read that. get done. This week, mm -hmm. 
Um, Musgrove does not want to wait till the end of the season, but will if it doesn't come to fruition in the next couple of days. Yeah, he should. He should do that. I mean, take that, bro. Yeah. It, listen. He, well, he should do. He should do both things. If first, if there is a deal for Joe Musgrove to get paid on average of eighteen million dollars a year, a year, he should jump on that. That's number one. Yes, immediately. Right. If number two, there is no chance to get a deal done because let's just say the number comes in. Let's just use less than eighteen million per year. Mm -hmm. Then Musgrove should wait. So, so if the numbers come in to average 18 million, Musgrove would be smart to jump on that. If the numbers come in less than 18 million, and I'm not talking 17,999,000, I'm just talking about if the numbers come in <laughs> less than, you know, 18 million, he should then commit himself to, I'll wait, screw it. I will wait. I will go to the free agent market. I will take my statistics from the Padres for the last few years, regardless of what happens in the second half of the season. And I will go find myself money somewhere else. Because here's the thing. The one thing about Joe Musgrove is this. And, and again, I'm, I'm going to come at this from Peter Seidler's perspective, okay? I'm the owner of the team. I got a lot of money wrapped up in Manny. I got a lot of money wrapped up in Tatis. And I haven't really gotten what I've invested in Tatis yet. I might, but it's a risk, a big risk. But the reward could be high as well. Right now, um, high risk, low reward because Tatis hasn't really played at all. Well, I mean, has not played at all this year. But if he comes back and he's who he's been, you'll get your money out of the guy. For Again, I'm Peter Seidler now and I'm thinking this thing out. If we're really serious about getting Juan Soto, then we have to be prepared not just to have him for the next two and a half years, what is the future? Is there a way to keep this group potentially Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis, and Soto if you get Soto? Which, by the way, I'll call a quick timeout on this, this rant. Today on ESPN, this is earlier today, they put up a graphic on which show? Sports, Sports Center? Center. First thing is yeah, oh, okay. Center. On Sports Center earlier today, they put up a graphic of what your team might look like if you got Juan Soto in your order. Uh, in your lineup. And I got news for you that as much as yesterday, everybody was talking about how the Padres are leaders in potentially acquiring Juan Soto. A lot of other teams are, are in on this as well. So here's the graphic that was on television earlier today on sports center. I happen to take this picture off my television. If the Padres got Soto, they'd have Tatis Soto and Machado. Pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. If the, Clearly. if the Cardinals got him, they'd have Paul Goldschmidt, Soto and Nolan Arenado. Also damn good. Mm -hmm. If the Yankees got him, oh my God, Aaron Judge, oh, Juan boy. Soto, and Giancarlo Stanton. Oh boy. And this That's, is this like 150, that seem fair. 150 home runs right there. That doesn't seem fair, man. <laughs> right. But wait, I, I only think it's worse for the Dodgers. And when I say worse, what I mean is of all four teams that are on the cat are on the screen, for those of you listening on radio, Padres have three guys, Cardinals have three guys, Yankees have three guys. Dodgers, though, have four names. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Trey Turner, and now Juan Soto. Here's the Should difference with the Dodgers. Juan Soto go. Yeah. That's this year. Mm -hmm. Trey Turner's a free agent. Everybody else, all three other teams, it's our long-term contracts for all three other teams. Yeah. As I look at that, and I'm just sheer, oh, God, the Yankees did it for me. The Yankees make me go, oh, God, no, 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 no. Don't let them do that. <laughs> Don't let them do that. Because the Yankees no. are already the best team in baseball. Out of nowhere, right. they just became the best team in baseball. And, you know, they got a young, good pitching staff. They've just invested a ton of money in Garrett Cole. They got Nestor Cortez. Like, they got – the Yankees are going to be a problem without Juan Soto. Right. You throw Juan Soto in there. Right. Like, see, that's the difference with the Padres is I don't think the Padres are a problem without Juan Soto. I think they're a playoff team, maybe. All these other teams, the Cardinals, the Dodgers, like, that's a problem for everybody else in the league. You can't let that. So it's almost like see, last no, year. No, no, see. It's uh -uh. almost like last I, I, year we were talking about with Scherzer. It's not just that you get Scherzer. It's that they don't get Scherzer. I think the – see, I don't I don't believe in the Cardinals at the same rate that you do. I'm not spooked just by traditionally, them. Traditionally, just they're just always Well, there. yeah, and so they've always been a good baseball franchise. They always spend, the, spend their money in the smart places. They make, right, they make the right deal. I would – the only – the only two teams that I see that and I go, don't let that happen, 
are the Yankees, which by far and away, and then the Dodgers, because the Dodgers have so many good players. Adding this guy to the team would kind of just be like the Warriors adding KD. It's like, all right, well, but I wonder if you're, you're if the rest you're the, of us is going to play to the end of the year. But I wonder if you're the Nationals. Because, you know, we talked about what the Padres have to give up, which is like everybody, all their prospects. Mm-hmm. Dude, if you're the Nationals, the like, what are they going to, gonna, what are the Dodgers got to give up? The Dodgers are packed with talent. Like the, Do- right. do the do the Dodgers do they you know like obviously people are like oh you just trade to T straight up or something like that like what are the Dodgers like who do they trade who like because you got to give a lot up to get Soto whoever you are our friend Chris Rose said that they would have to trade to T and some more for Juan Soto and at and and again Chris Rose knows more baseball about than me. But that's dumb. That's foolish. No thanks. Well, I don't. I think the whole point when of he that, comes on this show next time, I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him to his face. Well, after Musgrove listen, gets paid. Yeah, right. Um, if you go back to that graphic, though, the whole key to all of this is, is that anybody who wants to trade for Juan Soto, they're adding to what they already have. They're not deleting one of their stars. The Padres would want Soto in between Tatis and Machado. The Cardinals would want Soto between Goldschmidt and Arenado. The Yankees would want him between Judge and Stanton. And the Dodgers would want him to be part of a foursome that would include Betts, Freeman, and Trey Turner. So, listen, it is conceivable that the Washington Nationals, who last year traded Scherzer and Trey Turner to the Dodgers and got a lot of the Dodgers' top prospects in return. I say a lot. I mean, I'd have to go back and really analyze what they did. But I do recall at the time, there was one player in particular that the Dodgers had who was like their number one prospect. He was a pitcher that had just come up to the major leagues, and he was part of that deal. If you are the Nationals, you might be looking at the Dodgers' farm system, and you might be saying, there's more I want from the Dodgers than the Padres have or would be willing to give. And I I just wonder if the Dodgers – Pull this thing off. I think that there's well, also reports Soto, that, sorry, real quick. I think there's a lot of reports that saying that the Nationals are very much interested in not just prospects, but like major league ready prospects, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like triple A dudes, guys mm-hmm. like maybe someone like CJ Abrams that's already been up here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like guys that, so you could be looking at Gavin Lux. Maybe Gavin Lux gets thrown in there. Gavin Lux is an incredible young prospect for the Dodgers. Like you could be depleting some stuff from the major league roster this year. I would I would argue if I'm the Padres for Juan Soto, if I get to keep my my major league lineup intact, I'll give you whoever we got on the farm system. I can get more of those. And and by the way, a lot of those guys miss. So take them. Take them. Well, I think keep that's why piece. that's why Washington would say, "Hey, we got to have more. We got to have major league ball players." I mean, in theory. And, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, CJ Abrams, I love you, brother. I'll help you pack. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of there's, the the Padres have always had a highly rated farm system. Not and always. Some of those, no. Well, for the last three to four years, they have they have been rated higher because with Mackenzie Gore, C.J. Abrams, they've got guys that are playing at the major league level. C.J. Abrams is starting to come around. Obviously, Mackenzie Gore seems to have hit a snag here, but they have guys who you can turn to the Nationals and say, here's Major League tape on these guys. I look at prospects so, the way I look at draft picks. You want who cares? You want those prospects and those draft picks to turn into Juan Soto. Yes, real player. So if, right. like, if you're like throwing in Robert Hassel, who's a top prospect for the Padres as an outfielder, you're like, yeah, it'd be a dream cool. if he turns into Juan Soto, but I can go get Juan Soto now and I already got that guy. Well, think about this. Right. I mean, who do the Padres have right now that is homegrown, drafted, cultivated, and brought to the major league level. Mackenzie Gore, which is CJ who is and, and CJ Abrams, these two guys. Um, otherwise, I'm just thinking, you know, in my head right now, I mean, Hosmer was not a homegrown talent. Mm-hmm. Cronenworth was a throw in in a trade. Tatis was traded for, but he wasn't even, as I recall, the primary portion of the trade because um, he was just a kid at the time yeah. and a prospect. So it's not like the Padres drafted him and found him, scouted him and cultivated him and, and got him to the big leagues. And Manny had nothing to do with the Padres coming up through, right. his, through his career. Profar, no. Grisham, no. Myers, no. Mazzara, no. I mean, Azokar, Azokar. Um, but no, nobody. I mean, there's there's literally not a guy. I mean, there's two names, Mackenzie Gore and CJ Abrams. There's two guys on the Padres roster right now, unofficially, top of my head, 
uh, just reacting to this potential news. Um, there's two guys on the Padres that have come through the Padres system and have made it to the big leagues. How many guys so, on the Dodgers? Like Will Smith? Gavin yeah, Lux? I would have to really start I thinking think about those... that because Justin Turner didn't. Trey Turner didn't. Mookie Betts didn't. Right. Um, Freeman didn't. But great well, baseball teams not. traditionally may have one or two. They don't have five or six. Like, and that's the thing. That's why I don't mind trading well, farm system players that's what I'm because saying. they never turn into Well, that, that's what Who I'm cares? saying. If I were the Padres, I'd look at the percentages. they say, well, what is the percentage of guys in our farm yes. system that become A, major league players, or B, stars? And the answer is like 5% and 0% thus far. Right. So, And by the way, if one of them becomes Juan Soto, guess what? You got Juan Soto anyway. Yeah. I, um, I Listen, I, I will say this right now, just based on the history alone. I'm skeptical that the Padres will get him. Yeah. I would say of the four teams we put up on the screen and we didn't build the graphic, but ESPN did. I would say that the teams most likely to get Soto are who you would guess they are. The Yankees and the Dodgers. Don't forget about the Mets now. I, the Mets I should put back. the Mets in there. The Mets I, are back should... with their new owner. Like they're spending money as much He's as a spender. So they just gave Max Scherzer like 50 million a year. So yeah. Like, and they're good. Yeah. They're right there. I, I, I know the uh, the Mets, when the, when the second half of the season starts and the Padres' first series, I believe, is in New York against the Mets at City Field. Does that sound right to you? I haven't. Uh, the only reason I'm mentioning yeah. it is because my daughter told me uh, she and my other daughter and my ex are going to New York for uh, like, I don't know, a week or 10 days, and they're going to see a Yankee game. And then all of a sudden they found out that the Padres were playing the Mets, so now they're going to see the Padres' Mets. And my daughter's like, I'm wearing my Tatis jersey. <laughs> I'm rocking that. Yeah, they play Friday. All right. Well, but it, the I Padres mean, have traded away some good players that were prospects of theirs. Like Ty France mm -hmm. is an all star. They just traded him. Um, Manny Margot, he's good. Hunter Renfro, he's good. I mean, everybody on Cleveland that we got for Mike Levenger, <laughs> you know, like so the Padres have traded away like major league starters and all stars. So it's not that the Padres don't have guys that can turn into them. But I don't think that's the point. I don't think any of them, as good as Ty France has been since he left here and went to Seattle, I don't think he's anywhere near a Juan Soto. No, but right. I think the other part of it is, I think we started getting into this yesterday, is if you are A.J. Preller, we perceive him to be in a position where if the Padres, let, let's say the Padres don't Blame get out. Juan Soto. Let, let's say the Padres don't get Juan Soto. And let's just say, let's just play this out for a second. Let's say the Padres don't get Soto, and let's say they don't make the playoffs. My perception is, this is not based in fact. Nobody's said, hey, this is the threshold. It's either this or you get fired. But my perception is, is that management would start to say, you know what? We've given you a long time, and we haven't seen the end result. You know, And a lot of rope. Right. We, we've, given, also, we've, we've spent more money than ever before, and we've just not gotten mm -hmm. the results. So you know what? Maybe it's time to freshen up the front office. And if the Dodgers were to get Soto, I mean, listen, they're running away with oh, the division right now. If the Padres get man. Juan Soto and if the Padres get Fernando Tatis back, could they possibly make it competitive? Close the gap well, a little bit. Maybe. I think if you get if you get both of the, if you are if you can keep all guys intact and you just basically give them whatever they want from the farm system. If you can do that, now you have firepower going into the playoffs. So I don't think you're going to catch them in a division. They're way too far ahead. They would have to have a mini collapse or an actual collapse for you to catch them. So, But now, when you get them in a playoff series, you have firepower. You have answers to what they have. Right now, unless the tease comes back and he's out of his mind, you don't really have enough firepower to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, bat-to-bat -bat with them. Pitching-wise, I think you do, but bat-wise, you just don't. So if you get Juan Soto in that lineup with with uh, with Manny, with with uh, Tatis, with Cronenworth, it, you'll find some guys who get a hit here and there. You have a chance. You well, have yeah, a chance. You, you a go legit from having, fighting chance. Yeah, you go from having three guys in your lineup to having a legit four guys in your lineup. Who, That's what you really yes. have. Also with the Preller thing, who takes blame mm -hmm. for Tatis? Who Tatis. takes blame for Tatis? What? Is it strictly 100% on Tatis? Or does Peter Seiler be like, yes. AJ, can you get control of this kid? Like, isn't that part of his job? No. No. Okay. I'm just no, asking. No. No. no I, I no. just listen. I, if I were Peter, Seidler, but if you miss the playoffs again and you collapse again, are you not just going to point blame for everything on anybody? 
Yeah, but You're I fired. but if I'm Peter Seidler, honestly, like as as the owner of the team and as the employer of the player, I don't care how powerful the player thinks he is. If I'm Peter Seidler, I'm I would have had a conversation by now, and I'm sure he probably has. I'm just taking a guess where he brings Tatis into his office and goes, hey, man, look, um, you're a star. We get it. And we're really happy to have you. And obviously, we made a long-term commitment to you. What we expect in return, though, is a commitment to us. We committed to you long-term, more money than we've ever spent ever. Okay? I had to go out and call all my investors. This is true. I had to go out and call all my investors for a capital call. I mean, do you guys understand that? Like People who have money in Padres ownership, I own 2%. I own 4%. I own 6%. You know, Those people were all solicited. Hey guys, we need more money. And every well, you your choice was either you, again. your choice is either you put in more money or you get diluted. So all I'm saying is, is that if I were if I were Sidler, I would try and explain business to a young kid. We put a lot of money into you. We made a long-term commitment. We expect maturity and a commitment back to us. So Anyway, all right, listen, we'll keep going. I, we we want to hear some of what Manny Machado said at the All-Star festivities. We want to hear what Juan Soto was talking about. We want to talk a little bit more about the Home Run Derby. And uh, we got a lot of stuff we want to get to. So, you know, I think we're we're very sportsy today on a Tuesday, even though we were talking about sweating and undershirts earlier today. Hey, before we hit this break, quick mention of our friends at Mazda of Escondido, MazdaVescondido.com. Alan, the general manager at Mazda of Escondido, asked me to tell you guys he needs your used cars. They're worth more than ever before. If you want to trade them in on a new Mazda product, great. You're going to get more for your used car than ever before. But if you just want Alan and his team to analyze your used car and make you a cash offer on the spot, they're doing it. They are doing it. You could walk out with cash money. Mazda of Escondido, MazdaVescondido.com. They want, they need your used cars. Stick around. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. More on the second half and the All-Star Game coming right back. All right, great friends. It is Tuesday afternoon. It is July 19th. Today is the All-Star Game. Last night was the Home Run Derby. And tomorrow is the rare day of the year. And I say rare. It only happens like once a year. Everybody talks about this. The one day where there's no baseball games. The NFL season is yet to kick off. There's no basketball. Uh, there's no hockey. And I don't have any idea if there's any pro sport in America that is actually playing. Usually it's like the one off day of the whole year, which is why ESPN puts on the ESPYs on Wednesday. And I'm sure it's super convenient for them this year because they go from the all-star game at Dodger stadium to the ESPYs in LA. So well, should um, we do the whole show on like Comic-Con and stranger things and non-sports tomorrow. Yeah. You know, Comic-Con's this week too. We haven't talked about that. Comic-Con is this week as in this upcoming weekend. Is that right? Yeah. I'm, I'm asking because I really don't know the date. Of Tomorrow Comic-Con. is like some stuff, but Thursday is like the number first, the first day. Yeah. There, I know tomorrow somebody, uh, I got an invitation to like the comic con. Uh, it actually wasn't really me who got the invitation. It was Rachel who got the invitation. It was, it was a, um, like a, a kickoff gala of some kind, like a thousand dollars a ticket sort Damn. of a deal. Yeah. I mean, expensive. You know, like everybody's all dressed up in like gowns and tuxes, I think, and some sort of a Comic-Con high-end kickoff sort of event. I think, I'm not 100% positive, but I think it might be at the museum, what used to be the Hall of Champions in Balboa Park that Comic-Con took over. Yeah. So I, I, and honestly, like if, if I didn't hear about this event, I wouldn't have even known Comic-Con was happening this weekend. Well, I just want to say, you know, happy Super Bowl week to the hoteliers in downtown. You know, this is what you guys wanted, so enjoy it. Is this the first? Um, <laughs> oh God! Don't get me started on that. I know. Oh, is, is it, it, well, don't get me started at all oh, because because you know yesterday we talked a little bit about the Charger lawsuit, dude. We that. talked just a little bit about the Charger lawsuit, yeah. and once we put that out on social media, here come all the Charger trolls with, do they talk about anything else? Oh, and it's God. like, yeah, like every day we talk about a lot of other stuff. Um, it just so happens that this stuff was in the news and we take great pleasure in finding out that the chargers are being sued. I think Alex, you may have put something on social media that said the chargers have more lawsuits against them right now than they have playoff wins in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. And then everybody reminded me, well, yeah, they've also got more lawsuits against them than the Padres have playoff wins in the last 10 years. Right. But we're talking football. So potato, potato. Yeah. Anyway, give me that. What about ism? Is is this the first <laughs> Comic Con post COVID? Like the yeah. first? Is it big the real and, one? Like, the first real one? 
Uh, there was like a the, mini yeah, one in yeah, November, yeah, I believe. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the first right. like blown out, like everything in downtown is covered and there's stars come in. Like every, it's back. Like Comic-Con is. is back. But is this the only Comic-Con? I, like, I, I feel like Comic-Con now has this is the franchises. Comic-Con. This, is, this the. is the Comic-Con. There's Comic-Con mm-hmm. LA. There's a uh, Comic-Con elsewhere. But this is like the, this is the, this is the one. This is the big one. Yeah. This is Hall H. This That's is where like trailers will get dropped. This is where movie announcements right. will get made. This is where mm-hmm. A-listers come out. Big weekend yeah. for me. Yeah. Anybody going this weekend to any Comic Con festival? Never been. Well, yeah, me neither. No, Never I've been, been. I've been like every year I worked at the radio station. I went every mm-hmm. single year because like we got free tickets, mm-hmm. and then I would get like the media pass, and so I would I would go. But mm-hmm. I don't wait in the lines. I don't I don't do any of that. Like I'm not that guy. I, I don't need to see the actors. You'll catch me in downtown at some point. I always go walk around and check it out. This weekend, I'm just trying to think out loud here for a second. So I, I've mentioned this to you before. Uh, this is a big week coming up. So tomorrow, Wednesday, our man Bill Hagen is playing with his band, Keg the Band, North County's number one dad band, which I think is an absolutely hysterical thing to call yourself. Keg the Band plays tomorrow, Wednesday night, starting at 8 p.m. or is it 8.30 Eight. at the Crankin, 8 p.m. Crankin in Cardiff. First 50 great friends who arrive will get the Keg the Band Mighty 1090, Kaplan and Crew, 91X t-shirt. So the first yes. 50 people that show up. Oh, you got yours already. Cool, man. Let me see that. Keg the band on the I ain't got mine. You got yours? I bet you if you check your mail, no. you get yours. Keg the band. All right, repping, hold on, I'm going. Repping Carlsbad, California. You know what it came in, Browner? Let the me infamous, see come in. The infamous oh. yellow envelope that he sends all his yeah. shirts in. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So, so... um. Wednesday night is Keg the Band at the Kraken, which, by the way, I got to send a shout out to my friend Ron, who is the owner of the Kraken. I used to work out with this guy all the time uh, pre-COVID. Like we'd see each other in the gym. We'd hang out together. It was like one of those deals where it was like two guys who were going through divorces and like just commiserating with each other, the whole thing. Uh, So Ron yesterday heard us talking on the radio about Wednesday night. He's like, dude, are you going to be there? I'm like, yeah, bro. He's like, "Okay, I'm coming. So anyway, uh, that's Wednesday night. Thursday night is the opening night party for the great friend stables, which you guys are invited to. I don't know if you guys want to come up two nights in a row, but we've got our party tomorrow night for our investors. So where's it at? Um, I don't want to say on the air only because I don't oh. want a million people to show up because it's like one of those kind of hosted parties. Um, but open it is bar? tomorrow night. It is an open bar. Ooh. Oh, text me. I'm coming. Yeah. I'm in. You're interested now, huh? You're interested. Open I'm bar. In. You're interested, huh? Uh, yeah. Plus for you, for Browner, for you, dude, it will be Cougar Central. Bro, there's no night. sports this week. This is the week to get me, man. Why are you, why are you wait? Why are you wait to invite me? My well, next dog, you're is... invited. You are always invited. Everything I do, you're invited to. Post the uh, La Valencia. What's what's my what's my situation there? Uh, that's the by, Rancho what, Valencia. Us, I mean, our yeah, Rancho oh, okay. Valencia very, is uh, is important. Friday night, and that is uh, that is the official Del Mar after party. So so again, Kraken on when, yeah, Kraken Wednesday night. Great Friends uh, Stables kickoff party on Thursday night. Are you going to wear an undershirt with a dress shirt on Thursday night? If I can get to Costco and buy an undershirt, I might. Okay. Um, Browner, we got to also, we're doing a live broadcast on Friday from the track. So mm-hmm. we got to make sure everything's all buttoned down on that whole thing. But then on-, on I'm going to be in North County all day on Friday. You are, yeah. And then Friday night is the Rancho Valencia Resort, which is the official Del Mar- after party, which is like really, really high end, great food, great drinks, beautiful people. I mean, it's going to be an awesome evening to be there. So, uh, am I hanging out with Saturday, you all day on Friday? That's what and this then Saturday, like. we'll all recuperate together at the I Thrive Lounge. And then Saturday will be I Thrive. But you see that my whole point about all this is is that you know I didn't realize this was Comic Con weekend per se. It wasn't really on my calendar. It wasn't on my radar. And so um, it is conceivable, I suppose, that Saturday. After getting done at I Thrive and feeling really good and hydrated, maybe what I would do is maybe I would go to downtown San Diego, park my car, and just get on foot and uh, take in the Comic Con festivities. Yeah, I love doing that. There's like, you know, the costumes that you see, the stuff that you just, the people that you, the celebrities you ran into. Like, it's, I love walking around downtown during Comic Con. Yeah, like I don't need to. Go also, like I was gonna say, do you think the Del Mar because they did a new opening day? knew it was comic-con but then i was like two very different crowds they don't care yeah 
totally different. different. Very, very, very different. They don't different. care about the crossover. Very, Put it this way: very, very the, the, the people, very the people wallets. who are going to opening day at Del Mar, are looking for tickets for Comic Con for their kids. Yeah, dude, I should have Airbnb my place this weekend. I could have Airbnb. I could have made my mortgage for three months this weekend. You know, dude, I'll tell you right mm-hmm. now, I have friends that have um, homes in uh, like the Indio, Palm Springs, Palm Desert sort of area. And when it is uh, Coachella, they take all their personal belongings out and they leave all their furniture, obviously, and they rent out their house. I have one friend in particular. She makes her entire year of owning her home in that area on the two weekends of Coachella. And I think it's the one weekend of, of Stagecoach, three weekends rents her house out for three different weekends and literally without exaggeration, the mortgage is paid for the year. That's dope. Dude, you I'm could willing have easily, to bet. Let's go ahead. You could have easily done this. You ready? You could have taken your, your stuff, like your most personal stuff, mm-hmm. pulled it out of your place. You could probably put a lock on your like closet in your bedroom, you know, like put all your most personal stuff in there, put a lock on it and leave everything. TVs, everything else, bed, bedding, silverware. I mean, literally like just make it an Airbnb. And if you would rent out your place for Comic-Con, call it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you'd probably get, I don't know, six, seven grand, eight grand. Yeah, I know. I would have made, I would have made a killing here because this is a, this is a 10 minute Uber to downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and Grande, you come stay with me. You and Mar, come stay with me. Appreciate that dog. You're welcome. But you know what? I was just thinking. Del Mar could be rolling in celebrities on opening day this year because right. of Comic Con. Right, you're you're exactly right. Yeah. Del Mar could be chock full of of celebrities who are like, "Hey, let's do this. Let's go down to San Diego. Let's mm-hmm. go to opening day at Del Mar. We saw that on Entourage. It looked awesome. By the way, Entourage. I think yesterday also I saw, did Comic Con. <laughs> yeah, but I saw Entourage. Um, like the very first episode of Entourage aired on HBO like 18 years ago today. Damn. 18 years ago today, dude, that's a, sh- you talk about a show that made impact, but think about it. If you're a celebrity and you live in LA, you come down to San Diego, hit opening day on Friday, go to downtown San Diego on Friday night, unless you go to the Rancho Valencia resort and you go for the after party, which that also may be filled with celebrities because many of them might even be finding themselves staying at the Rancho Valencia. Then you go down to, to, to Comic-Con. You're right. Friday night, Del Mar and the parties after Del Mar could be like celeb central. Yeah, man. Lit. This San Diego is the place to be this weekend. Well, it, not only that, but I just read an article that the number one destination in America for vacations in the month of August is San yeah. Diego. Because uh, a friend of mine called me from Florida and he he's like, dude, um, what do you guys got going on in August? And I'm like, well, we're going up to Mammoth for a few days for a blues festival, which is going to be a lot of fun. And then later in the month in August, we want to go do something else because the first week of September, September 5th is Labor Day. I think it's the 5th. Yes. And then September 8th is Thursday, which is the kickoff of the NFL season, the Rams and the Bills. And um, so I'm like, you know, I, I want to make sure that if we're going to do any vacationing, it's got to be in the month of August because once September hits, dude, it's football season, you know, full throttle. And then really football season while baseball season's wrapping up and then basketball season tips off. I mean, it's all going to be here in a month. You know, like the whole sports world will re-explode, if you will, in a month as we're into, you know, what people call the dog days of summer. So um, anyway, we were we were going to talk about the All-Star game. And we were going to hear some of the um, some of the commentary that was made yesterday by the players as they were being interviewed. We'll get there in one second. Before we do, just a quick shout out to our friend Gary Cooper from Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. Look. When I bought my first house in San Diego, Gary was there to help me out with all of that. When I refinanced because I wanted to take money out, I wanted to build an outdoor barbecue kitchen area. Gary was there to help me with all of that. And when I eventually was going through a divorce and I was ready to sell, Gary was there to help me with all of that. Uh, Simultaneously, you heard Alex last year wanting to buy a house in the heat of the market when things were so expensive, when people were battling to, you know, hey, it's a five hundred thousand dollar place. Well, I'll offer five fifty. I'll offer six hundred. I mean, people were pricing themselves out because interest rates were so low, and there was such great demand. All of a sudden, the market has changed significantly. I'm not an expert in real estate, but here's what I can tell you: I walk around my own neighborhood here. I've never seen more signs for houses for sale. And what that's telling me, and I don't know this is a fact, but here's what my analysis is: so. 
you may have bought this house when the rates were super low. And now that the rates are a whole lot higher, maybe you're feeling like I need to get out of this thing. And I don't think the rates necessarily have a lot to do with it, but just people looking at their houses and going, you know what? The bubble was up here. It's starting to come down before it comes down even further. Let's get out of this thing. And so I see a lot of for sale signs. I see a lot of for rent signs and they're not just up for a day like they used to be. They're up for a longer period of time. Something's changing in the market. I'm not an expert. Gary is. He'll have a strong opinion for you. You should talk to him. 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. All right, Alex, where would you like to start here in all-star player interviews? And let's hear what everybody's got to say. Where would you like to begin? Yeah, sorry. I just got distracted with some. I didn't know this was even happening, but uh, tell me, tell me what was what distracted you? Yeah, we'll get back to All Star, but I think this is. Have you guys heard about this? Tell me, Charles Barkley taking a meeting with Liv oh, Golf. Yes, I have heard about it, and it was something I wanted to talk about today because I didn't yesterday. Have it yesterday man. But listen, yesterday we were talking Smart about man. David Faraday. Um, so David mm -hmm. Faraday, who was a CBS golf announcer, and I think David went over to NBC. I think. Yes. And David Faraday has now apparently done a deal. He's an he's an a dude from Ireland, I think, is Faraday. Um, he's done a deal with the Live Golf Tour to become like one of their lead golf announcers. And it just so happens that the next Live Golf event, which I'm not watching Live Golf, and it's not because I'm opposed to the Saudi Arabians. It's not because of what they did to the reporter. It's not their their record of human rights. It's got nothing to do with any of that. It's that it's not plastered in front of me on television. It's on YouTube, okay? And I'm not knocking YouTube because we're all over YouTube. But there's a there's a story today that Charles Barkley has, he said on a podcast that the Live Golf Tour has asked to meet with him and speak with him. And everybody knows, A, Barkley is an avid golfer. And B, Charles Barkley can get away with saying whatever he wants. Um, he's just got that sort of American carte blanche. And so... Barkley said, he goes, look, I'm, I'm, I'm listening because if Phil Mickelson's getting 200 million and Dustin Johnson getting $150 million, if they pay Charles Barkley, like some stupid amount of money, Charles Barkley will take all of his fame and all of that carte blanche that I mentioned, and he'll bring it over to live golf. And he don't care. He, he actually was quoted as saying that if you gave me $150 million, I'd probably kill my relative, even if they're really close and I like them. So the continuation to that story and the part that raised my eyebrows was uh, this morning, Dan Patrick uh, said on, who's very close to Charles Barkley said on his radio show that if he does join live golf, he will leave TNT. He'll be probably forced to leave TNT. Um, why, why do you say, forced? Well, why oh, do you say forced? Uh, just according to him, he says, this is what he said. He's the most viable voice in the sports media. You throw in all the commercials because you may lose those endorsements. Charles mm -hmm. knows that he may lose those. So if you're going to go after Charles Barkley, you don't have a TV deal and you have David Faraday. What are you going to give Charles Barkley? And Charles says he's going to listen to them tomorrow night and decide what he's going to do. He might have to leave TNT. And this is why it's a huge deal. Charles knows yeah. that he may have to leave TNT to do this. And then he says, I'm just putting it out there. What I was told this morning, Charles knows he may have to leave TNT. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think that the problem uh, the problem with that would be if he went to live golf and he left TNT, like he would essentially be retiring right. to just do golf. But, and I but don't think he wants to, to do that. But, well, well, here's the thing. <laughs> well, 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 of course. Well, but here's the, the thing. Don't forget the money. Barkley, Barkley has said that he plans to retire at the end of his contract with TNT, which I want to say is the 23, 24 season. So figure he's got two years left on his TNT contract. Barkley's probably, I'm going to guess almost 60, like probably getting real close to 60. He likely has lifetime money, but I do know kind of like oh, yeah. Phil Nicholson, he's got, he, he loves to gamble. Oh, yeah. he, he plays big money gambling games. So I just wonder if, if, if the live golf tour said to Charles Barkley, I'll tell you what, We'll give you a hundred million dollars signing bonus and we'll pay you. I'm just making up a number here, $20 million to commentate on all of these different events. Now, you know, you got $120 million mm. and let's say TNT is paying you. I'm just making up a number here. Let's say you're making 15 million, 120 million, 15 million. 
Now, for most of us, we hear that money and we go, it's not even a question mark. I will tell you this though. I think Barkley, I think he'll listen, but I don't think he'll ultimately take the money. I think he I think he will find this to be a way for him to squeeze out of the NCAA basketball coverage of TNT. <laughs> I just think I, 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 I think he hates that. I think he loves doing NBA on TNT. He genuinely enjoys the company of those guys. It's a fun show. They have a great time doing it, and it's very profitable. I know he doesn't like the NCAA portion of it, so he might use this in a contract situation to get some things pulled out of his contract, but I have no doubt. I have no doubt that they're going to offer him a lot of money, and they should, but – I, 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 I mean, listen, I they're, 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 they're going after a name and they're going after a guy who just can pretty much, behalf. they're pretty much can get away with anything. But here's the thing, just to give you an example, just, just cause I know I was going to talk about this later, but Alex, since you brought it up, we'll come, we'll come back. Yeah, to all sorry, stuff. dude. I didn't, I no, didn't know okay. anything about this. I just, yeah, read, no, it's read totally it. fine. Yeah. It's good. But here's the thing. Families of victims of nine 11, they're kind of, they're, they're sort of putting out the public call to former president Trump to cancel the live event that's happening at one of the Trump golf courses. Let me ask everybody a question here. You think Donald Trump is going to all of a sudden, like morally find this compass that goes, you know what? Tremendous people, tremendous people, tremendous. Like what, what, what is Donald Trump all of a sudden going to say? No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have the Saudis um, have their professional golf event on my golf course well, who are we all, talking they, about they here gave a, they gave him a hundred million dollars to do it and his son-in-law jared kushner has a two billion dollar deal with the saudis they're not canceling it right he might do not. all the events at all the trump courses that's ridiculous and right. i feel really badly for all these 9-11 families that are like whoa hold on a second it was these saudi dudes that crashed these planes into these buildings how could we be doing this but look who you're asking now this is why ultimately i believe I do believe Barkley will listen. I believe he'll look at the offer. It will be very hard for him to turn down the money, but I honestly believe Barkley will turn down the money. So Tiger Woods style. He, Patrick, Dan Patrick was asked, like, why would Charles do this? And he said, I don't know. Charles is the one who said it about leaving TNT. Mm -hmm. So he kind of like slipped his source right there at the end. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, look, this is... um. It certainly is interesting. It's just the right? beginning of what the live is going to turn into. Well, look, when when live goes and and makes a play for a really big name frontline golf broadcaster that brings real legitimacy. I mean, Charles Barkley doesn't bring legitimacy. He just brings name value, you know. So, all right, hold on. Come coming right back. We got a lot more we wanted to get into. We were about to get into some all-star related stuff. We were going to hear from Manny Machado in LA for the all-star festivities. We'll get back to it. We're in the seven mile casino studios here on Kaplan and crew time here of the show. I just want to make a quick mention of two things, kind of the same messaging. I always have one is uh, this upcoming Saturday is our IV lounge at I thrive MD. I really want to see everybody out there. Um, I realize this is not for everybody for a variety of reasons. First of all, it's Saturday afternoon. I get it. People are busy. But I think Saturdays are better than weekdays. That's number one. Number two, um, this this uh, is a really, really good deal. But it does cost money, okay? I mean, it does. Um, but you're getting a 30% discount. And I just encourage everybody who's been and you know how great you feel, come visit. For those of you who've never been but you've thought about it, this is the weekend to do it. I Thrive MD, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. Make your appointment. And uh, we'll see you there. And, and it's really a great deal because it's good for our sponsor. It's good for our show, but it's best for you. Cause I'm telling you right now, when you get done with these IVs, you're like, holy shit, 30 minutes. I never thought about this. Feels great. And I feel great. So I'll see you guys down there on Saturday between 12 and two, make your appointment 858-240-1497. Tonight is the all-star game. I'm hoping that many of you will be watching and you'll see Joe Musgrove uh, you'll see Manny Machado in this game. And remember what Manny Machado said about Joe Musgrove. Pay that man. Yeah, pay him. Go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, and buy the Pay That Man t-shirt. Um, I have no idea if we've sold any of the Trade That Man t-shirt. I know a lot of people on, on Facebook, well, I say a lot, half the people seemed offended by the, the notion. How dare you create a t-shirt that says Trade That Man? Well, we created a t-shirt that said Pay That Man. Nobody seemed to be all butthurt about it. Um, if you believe that Joe Musgrove should be paid, buy the Pay That Man t-shirt. If you think Eric Hosmer should be traded, buy the Trade That Man t-shirt. 
all of the money that we generate from t-shirt sales, which by the way, is a very small amount. I will tell you, there's the let's fucking go San Diego t-shirt. I will tell you a little later in the year, what my game plan is. I'm, I'm planning on taking all the money from t-shirt sales and doing something with it that I know you guys who have bought these t-shirts, I know you guys will think this is a great idea, but I want to leave it as a surprise. I'll tell you that later. Go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, buy the t-shirts and have a good time with them. All right, let's get back to the show. Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Kaplan and Crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. We were um, talking about, or at least we were trying to talk about some all-star related stuff, baseball stuff. And uh, we got sidetracked with the uh, the reports that Charles Barkley is meeting with the Live Tour and might become a golf commentator with the Live Tour. So if we got back to the, go- the, uh, the baseball stuff, yesterday there was a bet that was made on the air between Grande and the Brown Man. Uh-huh. Um, can you, Alex, recap the wager? Because it had a lot to do with, with – uh, Albert Pujols, who Browner predicted was going to win the home run derby. And Alex, mm-hmm. you said, no, he's too old. He won't have the stamina. Pujols did actually make it through the first round, which was impressive enough. But what was the bet you guys made yesterday? Uh, Browner said, oh, he bet me that Pujols was going to win the whole thing. Yes. And that if he won the whole thing, I would stay at the keg, the band mm-hmm. show until it was over. And if he didn't win the whole thing, then Browner had to stay into mm-hmm. the whole show until it was over. I thought I said the first round. No, Browner. That's had how to this stay began. Because he said, "Oh, he wouldn't beat. He wouldn't beat uh, um, uh, whatever his face was who was going against Kyle Schwarber." And I said, "Oh, he'll beat Kyle Schwarber. That's easy." And then the bet kind of got away from me. <laughs> you, yeah, you yeah. escalated. The bet got away from me. I don't, if you would have, ju- I would have. I 100% would have taken the first yeah. round bet. 100% would have taken that as well. And by the way, like whoever was counting home runs yesterday was clearly fixing it for pools because and Soto because the counting was off completely. But at the end of the, it was the weird. bet, Browner lost because Pools didn't win the whole thing. But, right. but I was also wrong because I thought I said he would hit three home runs and gas out. And in the first round, he hit one home run in 60 seconds and call the timeout. And I was like, well, this old man's dying, dude. Like get, <laughs> get the, get the ambulance ready. And he came out and he got on a rhythm. He switched the bat. He probably had a corked bat and he got some home runs. Wait, wait, hold on one mm-hmm. second here about the counting of home runs. Yeah. This went by me. I had a, um, I had one of those nights last night where, uh, where all my kids were here and they all had friends or girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever. And literally, I mean, I had one of those nights where I sat around with my kids for hours, just yapping and talking, which is great because I never, I, I feel like we don't get a chance to really do that enough. So it was really one of those nights. And I had the, um, the Derby on my phone and I had it on a TV in the background, but I can't say I was honestly like fully engaged in it. So what do you mean that they, right. they, uh, so the rule in home run mm-hmm. derbies is you can't throw the next pitch until the last ball lands. Oh. That's the rule. Yesterday, that rule went out the window. They were throwing them as fast as they could, and the announcers were not matched up with the scoreboard on the screen. And at the end of it, of the first round, Pujols, I believe, hit 20 because they had to go to a swing off because they each were tied. Mm -hmm. And I'll play it. Schwarber gets to 20. And you can hear Eduardo saying, oh, he's 20. Wait, because he looked at the score like, oh, we're letting Pujols go. Let me just play it and you'll kind of see like what I'm talking about because it was it was just weird if you were watching. This That's will be close good. down the line. Albert Pujols is watching intently. So are his fans. Schwarber 17. Schwarber 18. Nope. Yes. There's 19. Albert Pujols is going to stay alive. There's 20. Is he? Is he? Yes. So was, did he get to twenty? They never counted the last. They never counted the last two. They left them at eighteen. No way. Yeah. I mean, as as Ravage is saying, 18, 19, 20? 18. And then you could see him hit another one, and then he hits another one with two seconds, and they just stopped counting. So what happened after that? They let Pools advance. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and like the the big deal is not our bet. Like I don't care about our bet. 
the big deal is because people bet money on Schwarber winning. So mm-hmm. like the the betters were throwing a crazy fit mm-hmm. because who would I mean obviously if you bet pools as the underdog you're gonna win a lot of money, but they're like dude who's counting and then it just kept going in the final round. There's a picture I believe of uh, Soto, who there is no time left, and they they get one lands, so they give him 14 and they allow this pitch to go so they give him 15 in the final round. And he ends up winning the whole thing. Like it was just if you were watching it, the home runs never aligned with the score ever. It was just like a weird. I don't know, man. If I was a betting person, I'd be pissed. I'd be super pissed. Yeah, right on. Yeah. All right. So, so that was a, so so the, the bet, controversy of the home run derby. So ultimately, the bet you and Browner made was that if um, Pujols won the whole thing, this is as Browner points out, he he let his mouth do the talking. Uh, with Browner did, rather than yeah. his brain do the talking. Right. So Browner said that if he, if Pujols won, then you Grande had to stay at keg the band at the cranking on Wednesday night until the last song is sung. Correct. And if, and if Pujols did not win Browner then was responsible to stay till the very end of Bill's band's set. Correct. So Browner, you're going to be there Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna be up late on a school night, is that right? I mean, you know, schools for suckers anyway. <laughs> I need Bill to take a picture, like with his phone, someone's phone next to Browner at the Creek, and so we can see that it's eleven. No, we need what we need to do is we need at the end we need video where Bill says, "Hey, thanks for coming out, everybody. Good night. Get home safely." And we see that he's ended. The band is ending. People are going one more song. One more song, yeah. and yeah, Browner yeah, is yeah. standing there, and we have confirmation that Browner makes it till the very end. I have a question: Do they play cover band songs? Or do they play original music? No, cover band songs, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Songs you'll know. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to hear no original right. music. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't waste my time with you your original hear. crap. You know what I mean? Bill, you my guy, brother, but I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear your rendition of something you made up in a garage. What we didn't. What we didn't stipulate, though, even though we all said we would be there for the first mm-hmm. set, we didn't spec it. We didn't like set that Browner had to be there for all three hours. We just said he had to be there at the end. Yeah, right. Now, Browner, you got to be so there. Sometimes Browner got to show up. I got listen. I know people in the neighborhood. I can uh, appear, disappear, and reappear. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny yeah, it's you say that doable. because because you know uh, I mentioned to you, Browner, that you have become an inspiration for so many people including our very own Tommy Tommy, who tomorrow Shout night out. will be performing stand-up comedy for the first time in his career. I eventually see you opening for Tommy Tommy, Browner. I mean, I know that you have a budding comedy career as well, and I eventually see you opening for Tommy Tommy as he's headlining around the country. But Tommy Tommy told me that he's going to get done with his stand-up comedy show, and he's coming to the Kraken as well. So he'll wind up being there till the end with you too. My boy, Tommy's my guy. I don't see me opening for him. Just you see it the other way around. You see Tommy opening for put you. That out, put that out there. We tell different kind of jokes. So you, so do you not think that? How do we know? We've never seen Tommy. True, tell true jokes. story, Alex. I've, I've heard some of Tommy's poems. I've met Tommy on extensive uh, uh, hangout sessions. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the we tell different brackets of jokes. I don't know. I don't man. think our audiences will be the same. I'm not sure. I agree. I'm not sure I agree. Until Scott, I you see, can open up for him. It, Let's Scott it, open up for him. As soon as I see Tommy Tommy's act, then I'll be able to determine whether or not you guys bring in the same crowd. Like, what if Tommy goes on stage and starts talking about, like, <laughs> you know, like controversial topics and just starts, like, calling people out, you know, calling them racist and stuff? Like, what if right. he just, like, steals your bit? Like, like yeah. but it's Tommy's version. <laughs> Could be pretty that funny. That would be funny. I agree. I agree. Right, well, I'll see everybody yeah. Wednesday night. I know. Yeah. Look, I know it's a school night Wednesday. I know that uh, when I say school night, of course, I'm joking. I mean, I just mean it's middle of the week. You know, people got to go to work the next day. I realize it's not ideal, but uh, we're going to all be there. It's a Wednesday night hangout session. First 50 people get those T-shirts, which Alex has already shown us. They're really cool looking. And uh, we'll see you guys there Wednesday night at the Crankin in Cardiff. Uh, first, and, and the band starts up at 8 and they'll play till about 11. And I anticipate being there for most of it, if not. The only thing is, uh, if I'm going to get there, I might get there a little later and stay till the end versus getting there earlier and bouncing earlier. I think I'm... I'm, I'm going to get there mm-hmm. early and leave early. 
So if you want to hang out with me, yeah, I'm an early I think I'm there for the long term. Guy. I think I may be getting there yeah. a little later and I'm there for the long term. <laughs> if I were going to get there late, I could see myself getting there at nine o'clock and leaving at the end uh, versus getting there at eight and leaving, you know, after the first set. Me and Browner also got true, like a 30 minute true. drive home. Right. Too, so that is true. Yeah. Right. All right. Let me do this. Let me, uh, let me keep rolling here. Cause we, I, I'm keep trying to get back to, uh, to the, you know, stuff related to the all-star game before I do. Hey, just a quick shout out to our guy, Brian Bushfield and his family who runs West coast BBQ shop, West coast BBQ shop.com. So this is down in Chula Vista. And if it's uh, I know we have a lot of listeners and a lot of viewers in Chula Vista. So this is the go-to place. If you are looking for a big grain egg in any size, if you are thinking about what Alex has, which is a Napoleon grill, if you are considering a pizza oven for the outdoor kitchen, if you want Brian and his team to come build an outdoor kitchen for you, they can do that as well. If you're just thinking about spices or sauces or spatulas or gloves or thermometers or anything related to grilling, or maybe you're thinking about all these really nice meats that Brian has in his refrigerator, tomahawk steaks, New York strips, uh, fillets, and the list goes on and on. Anything for grilling, that's Brian Bushfield. He is the expert. West Coast BBQ Shop, westcoastbbqshop.com. Follow them on social media. They do a great job. And uh, again, we are into the grilling season. And if you need anything for grilling, Brian Bushfield, West Coast BBQ Shop. He's the go-to guy. Got the premier barbecue shop in all of San Diego County. There it is. All right, Alex, we were about to start uh, hearing a little bit about what was going on at the All-Star Game yesterday. Why don't you start us off with Manny Machado? I'm going to just... Okay, feel well, free. Let's start Move off with Juan way. Soto. Because everyone's going to be talking about... Yesterday, literally everybody before the Home Run Derby was mm -hmm. asked about Juan Soto. But we got to hear from Juan Soto first. Because if you guys remember, I think that we even talked about it for a little bit. Like June 1st, Mike Rizzo, I believe his name is the GM of the Nats, literally said on a radio show, we are not trading mm -hmm. Juan Soto. We are never trading mm -hmm. Juan Soto. And now they are, supposedly. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't talked with anybody to tell me how that changed or what was the mindset. But definitely, so like you say, they, a couple of weeks ago they were saying they will never train me and now the, all these things he came out uh, feels really uncomfortable you don't know what to trust but at the end of the day uh, it's, it's out of my hands of what decision they made mm, it's really uncomfortable I mean it is probably and Scott Boris was right over his left shoulder the entire time so that was probably uncomfortable for media members asking the following questions because then every media member from every market like New York and LA and San Diego started asking him, Hey, how about playing for the Padres? I mean, those guys, they are pretty nice. I mean, they have really good talent. I'm really big fan of the T's, how he played the game and Machado and all those guys. Mm -hmm. So he literally just started like, Hey, how about playing in New York? And he was like, Oh, you know, New York's great. I, I, I do very well there. Look at my numbers, you know, Yankee stadium. <laughs> it's a, it's a little league field basically. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I do great. What about playing with the Mets? Oh, I love the Mets. Like, you know, so like literally everybody started asking him about playing where, right? Did they then, and then did they then go to the other players like like Machado? Exactly. Okay, so then they go to the other players. Exactly. And they're like, what about Juan Soto? Right. So so like Soto, not only was the storyline yesterday going in because of the, the trade rumors, but then he winds up delivering by winning the home run derby. Because I saw Pete Alonzo's right. interview after his first round, and they're like, So Pete, you know, you've won the last two, and he had that like that, that whole thing that he does where he's, you know, he just kind of comes off as kind of sounding a little goofy. And he, he told everybody, he's like, well, you know, this year it's a whole different deal for me because now I'm not just competing for myself. I've got this uh, organization called the, you know, the Pete Alonzo Foundation or something. And I, I know he was talking about, I think I heard out of the like side of my ear, I was like, is it like about like rescue animals? Or I, I couldn't exactly tell what the Pete Alonzo Foundation was doing and who he was competing for. And if he won the money, he was going to be donating it. And uh, he wound up, obviously not winning. And Soto, who's the story of the day, where's he going to go? Who's he going to get traded to? He winds up delivering and wins the million dollar bonus right. for winning the home run derby. Check this, you know, check out your boy, Pete Alonzo. This is why you can put people in hospitals, man. This is what he was doing right before the home run derby. <laughs> go working out. Go Pete. Getting them you legs know. ready. He, Dude, I'm a big strong guy. Roots, maybe. And I can do major damage. We should have that mm -hmm. cut like available to us at all times. Cause you just never know when we're going to need it. You know? Yeah. 
You just look at it. this man is just like lifting, dude. Just lifting. Just lift. So many of these, nervy. so many of these pro athletes Weights. now, like they do this kind of stuff. I was reading a story about this weekend where Rory McIlroy, before he goes out for his final round at the Open Championship, like he's in the gym lifting weights and you know just got a routine, you know. So all right, so what happens? So yeah, yeah. Well, you put people in the Gotta hospital. Be a big strong guy. So this is uh Manny, Manny Machado, by the way. When he was an All Star. Not last time, but he, when he was an Oriole, he was an all-star. He was mm -hmm. also on the trade market. So they asked him, like, hey, you have experience with what Soto's going through. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, I think uh, I think we're in a little different situation. I was I wasn't I was already kind of aware I was I was gonna be traded. I think there's still a possibility that he might not. Uh, you know, I think he might be able to stay there. Hopefully he comes in uh place for San Diego. Hopefully. Uh, but um you know, I think it's 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 definitely something that that's tough. You know, especially for a young kid who's um, just worried about playing baseball. I think you just want to go out here and enjoy this week, enjoy you know the moment with, that you have with all these guys. Um, you know, and kind of just take away from 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 the whole aspect of what's going to happen. I love how uh, I don't know. If, I know you didn't watch Scott, and I know I watched all of it, but Buster only once Soto won. He goes, "Hey, man, all these trade rumors." And he's like. I don't care, man. I'm a champion. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Bad Bunny just gave me this chain. Like, you know, like, why is care. Bad Bunny so uh, all over the All Star festivities? Like, what is his connection? He's not from LA. He's not Latin America, yeah, but, baby. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out, like, why Bad Bunny has become, like, the go to musical he's the, he's celebrity. He's the biggest Latin celebrity. He's the biggest Latin. It, like, he wouldn't show up at the NBA All Star like game. The biggest, like, that's a place where Lil Wayne yeah. would show up or, or Kendrick. That's black culture. Baseball like, is Latin culture. It's not the white man's game no like more. Bad Scott. Bunny's album literally, yeah. His album like was all of twenty of his songs were like one through twenty mm -hmm. for like a month on all the charts, dude. Like he's like the biggest, yeah. you know, pop pop whatever he is star there is, and probably all those dudes listen to his music and they just love him. That's cool. That's Same, good. exactly what Brad Browner said. Like when Drake shows up, like when Lil Wayne shows up to right. things like that. Yeah, so yeah. You, you don't think like Neil Diamond or Barry Manilow is showing up at the All Star festivities to like no. give out? The I mean, ESPN, no. ESPN would probably love it. ESPN would put him on the broadcast. <laughs> Carl Ravage knows who they. Carl Ravage knows who they are. <laughs> and here comes Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I get, Carl didn't know who Bad Bunny was, huh? Nobody could. Nobody yeah, prepared yeah, Carl to good. just say, "Hey, this guy Bad Bunny over here." He's this big recording star. He's like one of the biggest stars on the planet, right. and he's giving out all these trophies. And uh, nobody knew, huh? Mm -hmm. Nobody knew. Well, at least, no, not nobody. Eduardo knew. Okay. Senor okay. Is this Bad Bunny uh, given? Is that Bad Bunny right there? Yeah. Yeah. In the, mm -hmm. in the, and in is, the bad, is Bad Bunny, is he Puerto Rican? Yeah. I believe so. Again, ESPN. The, baseball is, these are young athletes, okay? These are very young athletes. You have super old men interviewing super young athletes like they don't like they don't have anything in common at all so now you're going to stick a mic in his face ask him some bland boring questions and like the 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 way espn did the entire event was very lame like it was entertaining to watch from an athletic yeah. feet perspective mm -hmm. but the coverage of it was mm -hmm. mad lame like lame on a level that you could have watched it with the sound off my favorite part of the broadcast, and I was this is when I was still watching the English portion, was their sideline reporter interviewed Pujols after he finished his first round of 13. And everybody was acting like, oh, this dude's going to lose. It's over. And they're like, hey, how did you feel? Like, How did you feel participating? All these players gave him a standing ovation. Schwarber hasn't hit yet. And everybody's acting like, oh, this dude's going to lose because he hit 13. Everybody forgot Schwarber's fat, too. Like right, <laughs> and young like, and fat. Yeah, and he's lazy. Schwarber, Schwarber was gassed, dude. I'm telling you, gassed after the three minutes, and every it was hilarious. I was like, why are they acting like he lost? Like 13 is not a terrible number. Like it's not 33 that Rodriguez hit, but everybody was acting like he lost. They gave him a standing ovation. All the players surrounded him. The interviewer was like, "We really appreciate you coming. We're so glad you were here." Like. And then, like, even he was surprised. His kids were like, hey, you got to keep swinging. You gotta, there's a swing off, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and Pujols, honestly, Pujols looked happy to lose. He was like, thank God, man. So did they ask any of the Yankees? Because 
And I wonder if they asked any of the Dodgers about Soto since that was the story yesterday. Did they, did they get any of those guys other than Machado? Here's uh, um, he's going to help Jones. whatever team he goes to win a lot of ball games, you know. So I, I would hate to see him go to a team that we got to play, you know, down the stretch. Um, you know, it'd be fun to see him, you know, be in New York or be wherever he wants to be. But um, no, nah, he's he's definitely a game changer for sure. Mm-hmm. Basically everybody. Peter Alonzo was asked. Like everybody was asked. I didn't get everybody's because everybody mm-hmm. was asked, and everybody was like, yeah. You, you don't think we want him? I understand. I do. I understand. Um, okay. So who gets him? What, what else? Uh, is there any other all star home run derby video, audio, anything else that we uh, we really want to get to today? Otherwise, I got some other things I'd like to get to. I think we're good on the home run stuff. I think okay, good. Cool. Um, coming up. Interesting how um, there's a report. Oh, oh wait, one more. Do you guys know about this? There's a plaque of Tatis in Dodger Stadium. Um, I didn't know because I haven't been to Dodger Stadium in a while and I haven't walked around to see that. But hold that thought for a second. Why is there a Tatis plaque at Dodger Stadium that I'm going to just take a guess? Most Padre fans, I'm going to take a guess. Most Dodger fans don't even know is there. Uh, We'll get to that, to why that is. And also coming up, um, there was a thought that the Pac-12 and the Big 12 were going to get into business together with all this college realignment. Apparently, that's not going to happen. We'll get to that story coming up. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew. Hey, great friends. What's going on? Today is Tuesday. It is July 19th. We welcome you back inside the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. If you're just getting with us today, we've talked about a lot of stuff so far. Much of it was revolving around the all-star game. Some of it was revolving around Charles Barkley and the report that he is talking to the live golf tour and potentially willing to leave um, uh, TNT to go work for live because the money is just so great that he might have to really consider it. We talked about that. Uh, We talked about armpit sweat and undershirts versus uh, going without an undershirt and sweating like a maniac, like Chris Berman yesterday during the home run derby. Anything else that I've missed, Alex, so far that we should just recap here? Well, other stuff we've talked about? Um, Joe Musgrove's update on Pay That Man. Yep, that's right. Um, what the lineups, what the Padres, Cardinals, Yankees, and Dodgers lineups would look like with Juan Soto. Right. Uh, Comic Con. Oh, yeah. Comic Con. Uh, op- the Omar opening day. Right. Um, yeah, we've talked about a lot. You missed. Yeah, we've yeah. talked about a lot of stuff. So if you're just getting with us on radio, What I would say to all the 1090 listeners out there is uh, make sure you go check out our YouTube channel because that's where you can get the show in its entirety and it happens really, really fast on YouTube. Um, To all the TV viewers tonight, 7, 8 p.m. We're on on Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara, 118 Orange County, 118 LA if you're on Cox or Spectrum Cable. So lots of ways to get the radio show, the TV show, the YouTube show, the, uh, the audio podcast. So however you want to get the show, make sure you're following us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Cited, the whole deal. So guys, I want to uh, talk about a couple other things here today, since most of the show has revolved around baseball. i go to college football for a second. So we had J.D. Wicker, the athletic director from San Diego State on probably about a week to two weeks ago. We talked a lot that day about the opening of Snapdragon Stadium. We also talked a lot that day about conference realignment and our concern, which, by the way, we're concerned about San Diego State, no different than Stanford fans or or Cal fans or UW fans or Oregon fans. They're all worried about what's going to happen with us next. And um, there was a lot of thought that the Pac-12, what's remaining of the Pac-12, would potentially merge or do a deal with what's left of the Big 12. And I say what's left of the Big 12 because with Oklahoma and Texas eventually leaving the Big 12, the Big 12 has brought in other teams, Houston, Cincinnati, Central Florida. There's a fourth team, and I'm trying to remember who it is. Does anybody remember who the fourth team is? Central Florida, Houston, Cincy, and I feel like there's one other team that the Big 12 went out and got when Oklahoma and Texas took off or are taking off after I think it's the 25 season. So it's not as if the big 12 replaced Texas and Oklahoma with Oregon and Washington. 
they replaced Texas and Oklahoma with four schools. You I did not. That was the one I was looking for. So, so yeah. Central Florida has had one great season where they've claimed a national championship because they were undefeated. They also do have a beautiful on-campus stadium. Um, Cincinnati, I'm not going to say is up and coming because they may have up and came. You know, like they may be going back to what they were, which is kind of mid-major sort of stuff. Cincinnati had one magical season this past year. And if you're a Cincinnati football fan, you may go, no, you're wrong. You don't understand. They've been building. It took years to get to last year. But all I'm saying is Cincinnati was the outlier of college football last year because they weren't part of a Power 5 conference. BYU has been a long time independent once they left the Mountain West Conference. I don't really understand uh, people's obsession with BYU. Uh, they don't come with like a major television market. Salt Lake City and, and the state of Utah is not some major television market. I mean, yeah, there's some tradition. There's some history around BYU. I don't really get it. Um, and Houston is kind of the same thing. Like Houston has a big television market, probably top five, six, seven TV markets in the country, Houston. So they've got the TV market and Houston has big city appeal. They're in the state of Texas. Um, they have some history and tr some tradition, some guys that have won Heisman trophies and have put up monster numbers in college football history. So I, I kind of get the Houston part of it, but the thought process of the PAC 12 and the big 12 merging, apparently according to mostly the big 12 side of things, I think the big 12 is no longer really interested in a merger with the PAC 12. And what I've read thus far is that the Big 12 listened to the Pac-12's thoughts and perhaps proposals. And the Big 12 is like, you know what? Um, going out with Oregon and Washington and Washington State and Oregon State and Arizona, Arizona State, and what's left of the, of the Pac-12 minus USC and UCLA, we just don't think it pencils. Like, it just doesn't bring us the kind of money that we're looking for so guess what? You know what? Thanks, Pac-12. We appreciate you guys, but we're the Big 12. And the guy who's running the Big 12 now, he's got a very diverse background. I'm, and I, I wish I knew his resume off the top of my head, but I've read a little bit about him. He was the CEO uh, of Rock Nation. He, before that, was the CEO of the Brooklyn Nets and was the reason why they moved to Brooklyn. He oversaw the construction of the Barclays mm -hmm. Center. Um, so that was his background. Yeah, I mean, this guy's got a really diverse background in the world of sports business, not in the world of college football. And, and I think it's a smart move for, for the big 12 to, to have a, a sports business person rather than a, an NCAA or a college football person, sports business, more important than just college football background right now. Anyway, this guy, the, the, the guy who's now leading the big 12 said, Hey, we're open for business, but Apparently, they're now closed to business with the Pac-12. To the Pac-12. The thing, well, no, they're closed for merger. Right. Doesn't mean they won't That's try what to I'm purge. getting at. That's precisely where I'm going. You may not want to do a merger with the Pac-12 because you may look at Washington State and Oregon State and Arizona. I'm just giving you examples. Tucson, Arizona, not an attractive television market. Phoenix, Arizona, very attractive. Um, Pullman, Washington, or, or, or Walla Walla, Washington, or wherever Washington State is, not exactly the most attractive thing. Um, Oregon State, there's, there's no TVs. There's, there's no money to be made being in business with Washington State, Oregon State, et cetera. Now, Washington has Seattle, and Oregon has Phil Knight and Nike, and Stanford and Cal have the the San Francisco market in, in theory, they've got the Northern California television market, even though people tell me it's not a like really, really excited college football community, Northern California. But there, I'm telling you right now, Stanford, Cal, Seattle, meaning Washington and, and Oregon, those four schools, they're attractive. Arizona and Arizona state also could be maybe considered kind of attractive, but in terms of a merger, Pac-12, Big 12, Big 12's like, yeah, don't see it. But I'm just telling you, doesn't mean that the Big 12 won't say, hey, Oregon, hey, Washington, you guys want to come with us and leave these losers behind? Yeah. By the way, not that the Big 12 is, is anything so spectacular anymore now that Texas and Oklahoma are moving out, I don't think. The big the, the Pac-12 is better than the Big 12. So if I were Washington or, or any of the Northern California schools or Oregon, 
I would be looking at them going, what do you got that I want? Like nothing. Baylor, that's it. But we got we've got way better teams here. We've got a way better sense of of culture and college football than you do. Like Baylor's roughly new on the college football scene. So I did listen, man, the Pac-12, I'm glad they didn't merge. I'm glad that this is not a thing because I think this helps San Diego State get into the Pac-12. And I will repeat this 50 times over if I have to. I don't care. As long as they get into one of these things, I really don't care. Just get into the Pac-12. I would prefer the Pac-12 because it has more tradition and it's more West Coast. But in the Big 12, I you know, just get in the bigger conference. That's all that matters to me at the end of the day. The guy that broke the the news about USC and UCLA leaving to the Big Ten wrote an, he's been covering this nonstop for it. the Mercury News. He wrote an article today, and this is his headline. Pac-12 survival guide. Five reasons San Diego State is the obvious expansion school. Mm-hmm. And his tweet is the Pac-12 shouldn't consider adding San Diego State. Should did you say it, shouldn't? The Pac-12 shouldn't consider adding San Diego State. It needs San Diego State. Interesting. Yeah, I was what's hoping it, that was a follow-up. He, <laughs> what's his, what, I'm John curious, Wilner, what's, what his take is on Will, that? Uh, he did five five reasons. Here's your five reasons. Number one, the competitive factor. Starts listing how well they've done in football, in basketball, and how much they've been better at than most Pac-12 teams once you remove USC and UCLA. Mm-hmm. The exposure okay. factor. Talking about the greater Southern California region, how close the proximity is to LA, how there's no other school even close to San Diego State that would be in the same realm as, as Los Angeles. Um, the valuation factor, which is uh, the process by which ESPN, Fox, and other media companies value football programs. Um, he says market size, talking about San Diego State and the market size being number 27, which is larger than the lines of Kansas City, Cincinnati, Oklahoma City. It would be the fourth biggest market in either Pac-12 or Big 12. Uh, The resource factor, and then he starts going into the Aztecs opening Snapdragon Stadium, how that stadium is expandable to 55,000 seats. And then the fifth one is the academic factor. And this is what J.D. Wicker was talking about, how they're not part of the AAU, but neither are Arizona State, Oregon State, or Washington State. Mm -hmm. San Diego State also ranks higher than than Oregon State and Washington State in the national university rankings. They're about to be a research one institution school. So he lists all five reasons. It's a long article about why the Pac-12 needs San Diego State. Yeah. Well, listen, we uh, we hope that he's right. I mean, this guy's been right about everything so far. If you're the Pac-12 and you uh, were, I'm going to say, shunned by the Big 12. And, and by the way, Browner, to your point about the Big 12, just, just to remind everybody who's listening, not to assume that everybody knows all this stuff. Baylor. Okay, good mm-hmm. football, good basketball, controversial yeah. background of a school. Iowa State, yes. Iowa State, nope, trash. And I don't mean to knock Iowa State for everybody that's listening and went to Iowa State. I, I, I'm just what I'm getting at is you know, you, you, if you went there, you know. No, but if but if you, I've never been there, all I'm saying is is that you don't bring much to the table. You don't bring a big well, TV market. Iowa. You don't bring football tradition. You don't bring basketball tradition. Okay, right, Kansas which obviously has a lot of basketball tradition, football program mm-hmm. stinks, but it is the school of the state, okay? Yes. Uh, Kansas State, which, no again, thanks. they don't really bring that. Manhattan, Kansas doesn't bring a TV market. Um, Oklahoma State, same deal, doesn't really nope. bring a whole lot to the table. TCU is a different deal. No, no, no but, but here's the thing about TCU, and I'm not an expert in it, but here's what I'll just say about it. They're Dallas-based. That's all. TCU is Dallas. Now, Texas is the state of tech, the University of Texas, the Longhorns, they are Texas football. But mm-hmm. TCU is Dallas, um, is the Dallas television market. So they can brag about that. Texas Tech, I couldn't tell you anything about Texas Tech. Um, Lubbock. And, yeah, and, and West Virginia. Now, West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia. Texas Tech is the biggest university. Could you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Texas Tech would be the biggest as far as enrollment uh, school remaining after okay, so so Texas again and Oklahoma just real life. quick Baylor Iowa State Kansas Kansas State Oklahoma State TCU Texas Tech and West Virginia those are your schools in the Big 12 that are remaining after Oklahoma and Texas take off if you are the Pac 12 you are Arizona State and Arizona Cal Stanford Colorado Oregon Oregon State 
Utah, Washington, and Washington State. I mean, if I'm the, the, the advantage I suspect that the Big 12 has is that they're not on the West Coast because West Coast college football, especially Pac 12, has been really down. And from a TV perspective, they've been invisible, particularly outside of the West Coast because of the time difference. And they don't have a star without USC. And so if I'm if I'm well, the Pac 12, you I'll just finish my thought, which is this. Okay. If I'm if I'm the Pac 12, I'm looking to expand rather than merge because I don't really think other than Kansas basketball or Baylor's basketball football, I, other than TCU being in Dallas, if I'm the Pac 12, I don't really love what I'm getting into bed with in the Big 12, my opinion. You say that there's no star in the pack. Just for the sake of conversation and your explanation, you're saying that there right now after USC, there's no star in the conference. I would argue that Stanford has been at points and times a high point in football and in basketball. I would argue that Oregon at a time under Chip Kelly was, if not one of the more dominant programs, one of the more visible programs. And Oregon basketball has been consistent for more than a, almost a decade now with putting guys in the league and guys in the tournament, teams in the tournament. So I don't – I think that the Pac-12 has far more to offer than to than, than anything near the Big 12. Yeah, Kansas won the national championship. Do you even remember that? No. So this idea that the Big 12 is great and they can pull some teams from the Pac-12 into the Big 12 – would only be because they have better people at the top. They have better people running the Pac-12, and they can maneuver and create financial stability more than the people running the Pac-12. And I think that overall is the problem. The people running the Pac-12, they've kind of sunk it. Mm. The problem the Pac-12, mm. I think, is facing right now is that they are going to do everything they can to survive while at simultaneously teams are probably looking to bounce. Right. So that's exactly the point. So that if you're San Diego state, you're thinking yeah. to yourself, well, the PAC 12 is a much more attractive conference than the Mount West. We would all agree in, on that. But if yeah. all of a sudden San Diego state joins the PAC 12 and then Oregon, Colorado and Utah and Washington decide to leave and go join the big 12, I'm just giving an example. Then all of a sudden San Diego state has joined a conference that has Arizona and Arizona State. This is just in my own, you know, analysis, and has, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then you're talking about the Pac-12 trying to merge with the Mountain West at that point. The, the, right. I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, because now you're talking. If you are talking about Arizona, Arizona State, Washington State, Oregon State, can you then just turn into Boise State, San Diego State, and whoever else we got? Air well, Force, that's, Colorado that's, State. That, you know, that's, like that's all there is. It I leaves mean, it leaves you behind again. So. Like it's a very tricky situation. It's because I think the moving pieces are like just like live, it's just getting started. So to sit here and be like, yeah, we should go to the Pac 12. What will the Pac 12 look like in 2024? I don't know. Yeah, neither do I. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I don't, and I, I guarantee you the Pac 12 doesn't know what they're gonna look like in 2024. And, and, and here's the thing if I were the Pac 12 and I were saying, okay, look, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna try and go out there and expand a little bit, you know. Uh, before anybody takes off, let's expand. Let's strengthen ourselves. I love that the, the guy um, from the, the San Jose Mercury News wrote this piece about San Diego State being an obvious choice. But if you really look at the if you look at the Mountain West, what does the Mountain West have that's attractive? Here's here's the list: San Diego State, Boise State because of the success in football a few years ago. Colorado State maybe simply because they have a brand new football stadium. I wish UNLV was was worth a crap because back in the day they were a big basketball school. Their football program is horrendous, but Vegas is a desirable market, I think, especially if you're trying to create a West Coast conference. But otherwise, like I don't want Air Force. I would say like I would say Fresno just because they do have the central of California. If you can somehow tie Fresno into the Sacramento area, then maybe if I were the um, if, if, no. if I were the Pac-12, I would try to get San Diego State and UNLV just because of what Las Vegas is becoming and what San Diego State is, period. And 
Pac-12 does their conference basketball championship in Vegas every year already. Kind of makes a little bit of sense. I mean, if you're the Pac-12, like, you know, just because you lost two doesn't mean you can only add two. If you're, if you're, if you're the also Pac-12, true. like, like Big 12, there's eight teams there. <laughs> like, there's the number don't matter. <laughs> So, I, 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 so you're the Pacific Conference now, okay? Like, let's go get Boise. Let's go get State. Let's go get whoever else you want from the Big 12. If you're the Pac-12, you can survive if you're aggressive. I think the Big 12, this is just a, a guess here. I figure the Big 12 at some point is going to lose a school like West Virginia, as an example, which, by the way, mm-hmm. you may not value that much, but you're talking about like an 80,000-seat stadium, and you're not – Morgantown, West Virginia is not a television market. Pittsburgh is the television market. So it's somewhat more desirable. I could see West Virginia either trying to jump into whatever happens to the ACC. I could see West Virginia trying to beg their way into the Big Ten. Oy. Oy. How about how about a Pac-12 ACC merger? That way Ugh. you don't have to you don't have to travel across the country for every game because you have a West and you have an East. You know, you can basically almost stay the same. But I think that's more, if I'm the Pac-12, I want to be aggressive. I would much prefer that merger than the Big 12. Yeah, but if I'm the ACC, I'm not positive that I really, really want to get into business with the Pac-12 without USC and UCLA, which they're obviously not going to have. Well, what if what if the ACC starts getting ripped apart? Which They've is survived at the moment. Which is... But what if they start getting ripped which apart? could be which could happen next? I mean, that's just so a it. proactive top move. Heavy. It's a proactive top move. Heavy. Every conference is packed is is top heavy. That's why this is all happening. Like the Big the, Ten, the know. Big Ten's not top heavy. Not it, anymore. It, it, it it never was. Well, Wisconsin's SEC. been good. Wisconsin's been good. Ohio State's been good. Michigan's been good. Yeah, but you know, Purdue, Purdue okay Rutgers. Every now and then. It's all, North it's, North all relative, Nebraska, it's all it's all relative though. It's all it's all relative. It's all it's all year to year. It's all relative. What I'm saying is, if you're the Pac-12 and you're like Big 12, don't want them to do with us. All right, peace yeah. out. I'm calling the ACC because I got I see North Carolina, I see Clemson, I see Duke, I see Florida State, I see teams that are valuable much more than Cincinnati. I know they had good, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like every team we right. just mentioned. So, well, this is going to keep going. I mean, this is we're, we're all kind of sitting on the edge of our seats. Only, and I say it like that because now the Pac-12 and the Big 12, according to the reports, the deal is off. So we'll see where it goes from here. Anyway, listen. Hey, real quick. I uh, I'm not going to have time. I'll just say this. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studio, SevenMileCasino.com, and we're coming back with our final segment, including the highlight of the day next. Right, great friends. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We're pulling into our final segment for radio listeners tonight, six to seven p.m. Browner and Lawhead, and um, and for everybody else, we'll have a separate ending for you, kind of podcast style. The YouTube, the audio podcast, we'll have a separate finish for you guys. I want to remind everybody again to please make sure you're checking out the TV show. I know tonight's the All Star Game, but at least just set your DVR. Channel Four San Diego, Channel Four Santa Barbara, one eighteen in Orange County. And in L.A., if you are using Cox and Spectrum Cable, make sure you set your DVR. Hey, um, before we move on, just wanted to uh, throw out one other thing here uh, because we were talking about college football. Here are the odds for the college football championship. We were talking a lot about um, the whole situation with the Pac-12 and the Big 12 and how they're not going to do a merger now. But just take a look at the odds now for this season of college football. Alabama is the favorite. Uh, Georgia Tech, or excuse me, Georgia, the, uh, the defending national champions, their second favorite, followed by Ohio State, Clemson. This is when the numbers start to get big. How about USC? USC is just one of those popular brands that they've they've had all these kids transfer. They got this new high priced head coach. They're 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 doing NIL deals for millions and millions of dollars. So USC somehow works their way in and becomes the fifth favorite to win the college football national championship. Also, the betting favorite. Yeah, I think I feel like USC they, uh, is one of those. They have been the most popular bet to win the college football playoff. If I were in Vegas, they got, they got a and, brand new quarterback. They yep. got the Bolitnikov winner. Mm-hmm. Like they've got a, a brand new coach with an awesome offense. Why not? Yeah, well, that's what I'm getting at. If I were if I were in Vegas and you said to me, "Hey, here's a hundred bucks," and you you put those odds on the on the screen: Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson, USC, Texas A and M, Oklahoma, Texas, and Notre Dame. If you said to me, "Hey, here's a hundred bucks," just take a just take a flyer on somebody. I put my money on USC, you know, at plus 2,000. Why not? 
You know, I, I mean, I, just take the easy bet. It, it, it is. I mean, I get it. If you want to make some money, the USC is a right. good bet. But, but if you just want to be like a for sure thing, you want to bet a hundred bucks and make Bryce Young's bucks. back. Bryce Young's back. Alabama's right. back. You know, like Bryce Young's a Heisman. He's back. Yeah, you know, yeah. your 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 best chance with your worst odds is Alabama. Like, yeah, but that's like betting a horse that's two to one versus right. a horse that's What's twenty to one. Yeah, I want to yeah. bet the horse that's twenty to one if if he's got a legit shot. The thing about USC is USC is an unknown. First year head coach, first year quarterback receiver that transfers who was the top receiver in the country last year and um don't really know much about usc's defensive improvements because they weren't very good last year but again if i were just taking a flyer i'd rather i'd rather take the flyer on sc than the smaller odds against you know taking alabama right. just taking the chalk so there you go if you're a college football fan it's not too far away i don't know the official start date like what's San the first state's labor day weekend is San Diego state playing on saturday September third. Third. Yep. Wow. They're leaving the I, lights on. I guess they're testing the testing the jumbotron, so they leave the lights I saw on. That, yes. I saw that two days. It ago. It looks yeah. pretty cool, man. It does yeah. look cool. Yeah. It does look cool. I, and I know they got like a was it Jimmy Buffett concert first. I did see that. Yeah. Like, I'm very curious to see how how competitive they are with Petco for concerts. Petco, you know, they Ooh, get a lot of big names that's there. A great question. That's a really and good question. you know, if you're, you're how looking is the at layout. A, you're looking at a 30,000 seat versus a 40,000 seat, but Petco kind of gets rid of a bunch of seats during concerts. So it'd be very interesting to see if they're going to be aggressive for concerts. The other, the other thing is, as Browner points out, you know, these concerts at Petco are out in center field. Mm -hmm. And so that gives you the whole ballpark to kind of surround right. the stage. And then they put, you know, seating on the floor at Petco. Right. Whereas if you are going to put a concert, in snapdragon and i haven't been there yet but you know you're going to put it in one end zone let's say right and then the whole and then it becomes more rectangular and then if, you, if you are a 360 stage yeah i guess you could do that but if you're if you're a suite holder you know and you're on the side and you're looking at versus if you're a suite holder and you're on this on the first base side or the True. third base side at petco you have a much better view i don't know be curious be curious yeah, i listen curious. i give san diego state a ton of credit um a i never thought this stadium would be built B, I didn't think at the beginning it was a great idea. And C, I don't know who's exactly like running the stadium outside of football, but to start promoting concerts and to start, you know, utilizing that facility and, and generating revenue, I give San Diego State all the credit in the world. They got it done when many of us, I say us, when many of us doubted them. So super bummed I'm going to miss opening game. Super bummed. Why were you going to be? Vegas. Another bachelor party? Last one. Yours? Of the year, hopefully. Yep. Oh, all right. Yeah, I don't see myself yeah. going to that first game either. I don't see myself going to the opening game at Snapdragon Stadium either. I feel like that's like the last weekend of not like the official last weekend of summer, but it's kind of like th that next week after Labor Day. I think I mentioned this earlier, but Thursday is the Rams and the Bills as the NFL season kicks off. So I, I feel like, you know, like I want to I want to get back for that and I may try and do something that would take me out of town and I won't be there. I don't know. Maybe if I am in town, I'll go for sure. Yeah. I would like yep. to go see it. I, I'd like for us to go see the stadium before they open it. Cause I'd like to see it before anybody walks into it, before anybody yeah. puts their Make gum on the floor, you know, before people start peeing on the floor in the bathrooms. Yeah, I mean, like, right. seriously, I'd like to go see it when it's perfectly pristine and it's never even been touched, you know, make a call. Oh, we should do that. Let's go. We should do that. Should make that call. We talked to JD about it last week or two weeks ago. All right, let me move on to a couple other things. Before I do, I just want to give a shout out to our friends from HVGC, the Hellman Valley Growers Company. I think I mentioned this to you, but if you Google this, Brian Buckley, the founder of HVGC, there's a really big article written about him in the LA Times. And he, what he said was, hey, you know, US government, you sent me to war. Um, you broke me, now fix me. And the 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 concept of the story was, that prescription pills were not working for Brian and so many of his, you know, former veterans who were dealing with PTSD. And so they, they got into the cannabis industry and it's turned into a big hit for them. People love to support veteran owned and operated businesses. And so imagine here are these guys that were in the Helmand Valley province of Afghanistan, seeing the most violent war and stuff going on. They come back, they've got all these PTSD issues. They're popping prescription pills. They're being prescribed by, you know, the, uh, the VAs and so on. 
and nothing's working for them. They wind up getting into the cannabis industry. It's turned into a great product, a great cause. And you can read more about it at hvgcompany.com, hvgcompany.com. And wherever you go to buy your cannabis products, ask for them by name, HVGC. All right, moving on. Oh, real quick. Okay. Sorry, real quick. Let's pay off the Tatis thing. We never did it. We did not pay off the Tatis thing. Yeah, the plaque, Dodger Stadium. You know what? You're right. We did not pay that off. Earlier today, we were talking about why does Fernando Tatis have a plaque at Dodger Stadium? And Alex is showing it to us right now for those of you that are listening. 467 feet, San Diego Padres, Fernando Tatis, September 30th, 2021. I know this was talked about yesterday during the Home Run Derby. Players who can hit the ball out of Dodger Stadium, like legit out of the ballpark. And so I think Tatis in 2021, that September 30th date, was the last player in a game to hit a ball out of Dodger Stadium. Right. And and are there a series of plaques of, of guys who have there done There is. This? Okay. I could okay. only find another picture of the Mike Piazza one, but Willie Stargell did one in 1965. He hit another one. In, yeah. Wow. Uh, he hit another, according to this uh, report, estimated 506 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1973, he hit another one, estimated 470 feet. Mike Piazza in 1997, 478 feet. Mark McGuire, of course, 1999, 483 foot. Giancarlo Stanton in May of 2015 hit one 475 feet. Mm -hmm. And then Tatis was the last one in 2021. Interesting. So they've got mm -hmm. plaques of all the players who've hit home runs and bombs out of Dodger Stadium and Tatis is there. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. I thought it was like pretty strange. I was like, why would they put a plaque of that? But I guess they do it for everybody. Yeah. I thought it'd be more like Giants, you know, like they don't count the home runs in the Bay unless a Giants player does it. They don't kind of count a home run that goes into McCovey Cove? Unless a Giants player hits it. Really? On the little scoreboard? Yeah. Not in the history books, but on their scoreboard, yeah. Okay, got it. Didn't know that. Yeah. All right, All right. there you go. Hey, um, other things just to get to before we get to the highlight of the day. So, um, Browner, I had to find out a little bit yesterday about the Drew League you were telling me about, you know, that LeBron played in this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, you were kind of – I, the way I heard you say, oh, it's a bunch of plumbers and, you know, a bunch of electricians and it's a bunch of, you know, nobody's just putting, you know, just kind of getting together and playing ball. Overseas guess, players, yeah. Say that one more time. And overseas players, yeah. And overseas players. But a I, I, buddy of mine sent me a message and I'll, I'll tell you what it said because um, there was a little more detail around it. Um, he said that it's um, it is the the school is named Drew, uh, King Drew High School in Watts. And he says that the um, games are all free for fans. And I guess they say it's first come first serve. So like people, whoever shows up can get in. That's what I said yesterday. Yeah. Um, but apparently it's an actual league. It's an organized league. I just don't, I never really heard of it until yeah. LeBron played in it, you know, and then yeah. all the basketball experts, you know, say it like, as if we all know it, like I know what the NBA is, I know what the NFL is. I know those are leagues, but I didn't know what the drew league was. And then LeBron played in it. And I was like, what, what, what is this? I need to know more about it. Um, but the story about LeBron though, now is that LeBron and AD and Russ have now all finally gotten together and taken a call together. And I think a lot of this has to do with when LeBron and Russ were both in the same arena at the summer league and LeBron's holding court down here. And Russ is over here and they never come together and people assume thereafter, well, there's a really icy relationship between those two guys, because why would Russ not know that LeBron was there and go over and kiss the King's ring? Cause you know, LeBron doesn't have to walk across the arena to go say, yo, Russ, my man, what up? How's it going? Bring it in. But Russ <laughs> should be respectful to the King and go over to LeBron and bow down, and show his respect. So that people don't have this, this notion that the three of them can't all get along or that, you know, there's this icy relationship. So the, the report is, is that LeBron, AD, and Russ have all gotten on the phone. Mm -hmm. You imagine LeBron. Hey, Russ, you there? Hold on. I'm at a conference in AD. AD, you there? Hey, man, I got Russ. Come on. With me. I got Russ. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Come on. AD starts the call and calls LeBron when Russ is on the phone. Yeah. Come on. So 
the story goes that the three of them have now all gotten on the phone. I'm trying to remember whose report this was. Um, Chris, Chris Haynes. Haynes. Yeah, here, Sports. put it up on the screen so we can actually read it. The Los Angeles Lakers big three of LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook huddled up on a phone conversation the first weekend of the NBA Summer League in Las Vegas with each expressing their commitment to one another and vowing to make it work, league sources told Yahoo Sports. But he keeps it going, Scott. What's he say next? Because the real story is there's a big if. There's a big if there. Mm -hmm. He says, while the uncertainty of Westbrook's future with the Lakers remains, the conversation was organized to make sure all three were on the same page as long as they're joined together in their pursuit of a championship. So Which means the, the assumption yeah, is if Russ is here. Yeah. We all got to play together. Mm -hmm. But the, the question is, Hey Russ, is winning a championship important to you? Cause for LeBron, it's seemingly everything. And for AD, he's already gotten a taste. And the question uh, of the question of, are they all aligned on their same goal of wanting to win a championship? Don't you think that the assumption is, is that, they're questioning whether or not Russ is into it or not. No, I just think they said, Hey bro, we get it. This is the way I, this is the way I read it. We get it. You may not be here, but if you're here, we got to do this dog. Like we have to, like, I just think they just like, we're honest. Like, Hey, you may not be here. You understand you may not be here. Cause Russ wants to go. Like his agent said it. Russ wants to go. His, he fired his agent. Cause his agent was telling him the best thing for you to do is stay here. And he fired his agent. His longtime agent. So I think that they just got on the, and that I really think that's why they didn't even talk in Vegas because I think Russ was probably pissed off. All right, Brown, I, some analysis. This call was solely based on we cannot trade you. It's not going to happen. So we have to work together. The question of who wants to win a championship more of the three, I would put LeBron James and Russell Westbrook on the same level. I think the issue is AD. AD already won. AD got his money. AD's relaxed. I think Russ is still hungry. I think LeBron is still hungry because he wants to be known as the greatest player ever. And that that hunger is never done until it's over. But I think that call was literally saying, hey, man, I, it, it may not happen. And if it doesn't happen, let's all show up. Let's all show up on the same page. Let's be professional about it. Let's take care of business. Period. I think that's all that was. I don't think it would... I don't think him and LeBron have a negative relationship. I just think sometimes one person says something who's connected that's you know three degrees away from it. They say something to a reporter and then it's reported as they, they don't they don't have from what I've understood, they don't have an issue. Well, I know uh during um the uh Mike Greenberg show Get Up on ESPN, mm -hmm. they had a graphic on the bottom of the page that LeBron was saying something like there are times where I wish I was a tennis player or a golfer. And I, I took that as where I could control everything. Cause it's just me, you know, versus yeah. now I got to deal with teammates because the, the other part of the graphic was LeBron saying on his show, is the shop still on HBO or is it now a YouTube? Thing? Yes. It's on, the, it's, it's on HBO. Okay. So on LeBron's show, the shop, which, you know, LeBron just does it. He put, he says things, so that he can promote things so that people will come watch what LeBron says. But he had this comment that everyone feels uh, he wants everyone to feel the same on his own club, but he doesn't feel like everybody is. So I don't know if LeBron is talking about AD or if LeBron's talking about Russ. I make the assumption that LeBron is talking about Russ, that not everyone feels the same on your own club. Like not He's everybody is, is rowing Russ. in the same direction. What do you think, Alex? He's clearly talking about Russ. No, Browner thinks he's talking about AD. I know. Because Browner was the one that think, still thinks they'll win a championship if the three of them run it back. Uh, it, if they're healthy? No. Well, first of all, let me make something very clear. I think the Clippers will win a championship next year. If the Lakers' three best players are healthy, I think the Lakers are a top five Western Conference team. I really do. If they're all healthy. And again, they haven't shown that they can be healthy. But if they are healthy, if LeBron plays 60 games, they will be a top five. If, if LeBron plays 60, AD plays around 65, Russ plays 70. That's a top five Western Conference team. Bro. Say it, bro. <laughs> that seems awful. <laughs> With those three. Alex is Alex is putting up on the screen the <laughs> roster that the that the Lakers currently have. Mm-hmm. And he that's trash. 
top to bottom. Now, do well, me not a, top to bottom. Now, okay. Like, now, this is this is great. This is awesome. That's fantastic. Find me another team with three better top line players. Because in the playoffs, we're not talking about uh, Scotty Pippen Jr. We're not talking about uh, uh, Wayne Gabriel. We're not talking about those people in the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. If they're healthy, the conversation will rest upon the three best players. And no other team has three top line players better than those three. Well, we only got two. Yeah, I don't know why you put Russ in this conversation. And even then, like it's more of one and a half because AD is not only right. He's he's half a season guy. Again, the caveat is if healthy, which they haven't shown the ability to be, if healthy, there are no three better players on one team than what the Lakers have. It's not. I you guys can poo poo Russ all you want. All I'm saying is that Russ historically and statistically KD, Kyrie, and Ben Simmons. (laughs) Yeah, really, right? All right, let's do this. Let's get to the highlight of the day, man. I'm curious to see what Alex has picked out for us. All right, here we go. Here's the highlight of the day. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Highlight of the day is brought to you by Tori Holistics. Go to Kaplan and crew.com. Click on that Tori Holistics banner and you'll see how to get 20% off. So use the promo code is SD Pride online or at checkout. And you spend 75 bucks, you get 20% off. That's simple. Promo code SD Pride at Tori and California Holistics. Uh, I'm keeping it local and I'm going to give some love to the biggest superstar in San Diego, Alex Morgan. Because yesterday, mm-hmm. the U.S. women's national team. Won the CONCACAF women's title. CONCACAF is Central America, Caribbean, North America. All the teams played in a tournament this summer. The U.S. women, unsurprisingly, won. But it was a close game against Canada. And you know how they won? Alex Morgan hit a penalty kick. And you know who the keeper was for Canada? Tell me. Her San Diego Wave teammate, Kaylin Sheridan. No way. Yep. U.S. women win one nothing, And after the game, or... Excuse me. After the match, Alex Morgan wanted to figure out how many margaritas they could put in the tr- in the trophy. She said twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the goal that she scored? Um, was it a penalty kick? Penalty kick. Yeah, I can't show it because soccer they take. So so she kicked the ball. Alex Morgan left footed, right? Yeah. And uh, the goalkeeper dove right, and Morgan took the ball right. So the goal no, Morgan took it right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Sorry, so the yes. goalkeeper yeah. dove to her right, and Morgan kicked it to her right. Something like that. So, so they, the ball, right. The ball went to the right and the keeper went to the opposite direction. And that's how, Mm -hmm. and I just wondered it now that I know that, that it's the goalkeeper that, you know, is on her same San Diego wave team. Like if she was thinking to herself, we've done this in practice a million times. Mm -hmm. She's going to go Morgan. If you watch the video, uh, Alex was almost giggling at first, just to to the idea of it. Cause I'm sure they do it all the time. Mm -hmm. And so at first she steps up and she's got this like kind of like smirk to her. And then she starts looking down and taking like 10 deep breaths. Mm -hmm. And she just never made eye contact with her teammate because obviously they probably know each other very well. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool yesterday. Uh, Alex Morgan lives somewhere in this neighborhood that I, I mean, I think she lives in Cardiff and somewhere. I'd love to run into her. I'm a huge fan. I mean, I am a really huge fan of hers. She's also uh, voted MVP of the tournament as well so she's great shout out she is really great I, I i'm a huge alex morgan fan and uh gosh i would love to meet her i mean i met her that one time at qualcomm stadium remember that stadium that used out? to be yeah and then i got thrown mm-hmm. out by security yeah so I'd love to right. run into her huge alex morgan fan all right listen radio listeners time for us to peace out I saw her. browner lawhead coming up next and we'll have a separate finish for the youtubers and the audio podcasters radio listeners we're back tomorrow peace out everybody All right, everybody, Uh, we're getting ready to wrap things up here today. Man, I feel like today was a very, very sports-centric kind of show. And I really, I I thought we would be, but I thought at the beginning of the show when we started talking about, like, sweat and T-shirts and stains, and I was like, "Uh uh-oh, this thing. But it was related to sports. Right. It was. So I didn't know if things were going to go off the rail or not, but things uh, things stayed on the rail. So Thursday might, you know, tomorrow might. There are no sports after today. Yeah, all-star game tonight. Tomorrow's ESPYs. Um, I can't wait till they introduce Manny Machado's, which is probably if you're watching right now has already happened. But like the booze raining down from Dodger fans. By the way, there was a, of course they can't control themselves. There was a fight yesterday in the outfield. Like, nice. Who fights during a derby, dog? Come, Come on. on, you mean nice. wait? There was there was a there was a fan brawl. 
not just a fan brawl, uh, Dodger on classic Dodger on Dodger crime. No way. Fight. Yep. You gonna show it to us? I'm pulling it up right now. Mm. <laughs> Something we couldn't show it on the actual show or what? No, I just forgot about it. Oh. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that great dude. of a video, to be honest. Like the dude in the hat's kind of blocking most of the action. Okay, let me see what's going on here. Dude in the hat is trying to break things up. Kershaw is that's right it. there. That, that's that's the whole fight. Yeah. The dude in the blue hat or in the uh, straw hat kind of blocked all the action. So I think that's why I forgot. Hmm. All right. Well, there you go. All right. Hey, listen, uh, all-star game. Enjoy it. Watch it. We'll be talking about it tomorrow. And, uh, and have a great afternoon, everybody. Until manana. Peace.